News at your fingertips. Everything you need to know. Captivating. And indeed, the potter wants to put you back together again. So whatever you're going through, wherever you are in life, know that God has a plan for you and he indeed desires to put you back together again. But of course, it's a beautiful Friday and it's new day for you right here on TV3. And I'm here with Johnny and Brian. Good morning, guys. Mm -hmm. Great morning. Great, great, yes, great, great morning. And, and it's and coming I, from Press On Kids. That's yeah. the name of yeah. the brand. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Jehovah God tell uh, the children of Israel to mm. just uh, blow the uh, trumpet and sing exactly. praises to God. Yeah. Exactly. And the walls of Jericho just yeah. came. Oh, and how wow. powerful, that, that's, that's how powerful a music can be. Chronicles 2021. Yeah. We're, we're preaching. We're <laughs> we are indeed <laughs> when the spirit, spiritual. I must, I must say that, mm. you know, the melodies and harmonies mm. are on point. They sweet. Are. The they timing, are. the rhythm, the pace, the groove. Mm. Solid, man. It mm. is. And indeed, the spirit. You feel the spirit here. I mean, we have to close and go to mm. church. Or we should and confess this into service. We're welcome you to today's I'll edition. I'll take the offering. No. <laughs> I'll, I'll count it. No. <laughs> of course. And that's a way we welcome you to today's yeah. edition. It's a Friday morning. We're starting mm. with you on this platform and letting you know that the great Jehovah God sits high up there and his answer are all up. And of course, I have been saying that we need prayers for Ghana. So this mm. kinds of music is what yeah. we need right. this weekend. This the pray for the Letra Commission. Pray for Ghana. Mm. And let the glory of God the Lord shine upon Ghana this morning. Of Good morning course. once again, Ghana. It's a new day mm. and you are feeling the sunshine and feeling the musical groove as well. But we have a lot more for you. You know, Friday mm. we get really uh, jazzy <laughs> and groovy. And yeah, I mean, so we're going to bring you a lot of that. Plus, all the other conversation will be ranting as well. Uh, and, and then we'll be having a news review segment. But we're big on your comments. So we should like to read them on WhatsApp 050 823 we would like to read that one here. Yeah. Oh, you may be day. lucky to catch a glimpse of GMB ladies today, won't they? Of course, of course. So, <laughs> so what we're going to yeah. do now is that the auditions are over. Mm -hmm. We understand the medicals are also over. Mm -hmm. What it is is that you get a chance to pick out who represents your region mm -hmm. this year. That's yeah. that's a, that's I more see. cool, right? So, the saffron is ready. So it's just just about us. And, <laughs> and, and, and I don't but the saffron right. is ready. You wanted to join. You want to be there? Is it chaperone? No, no, no. Yeah. no, no still I, yeah. Like women's commissioner. In, no, initially I, I wanted to participate, but then mm. I pulled out when I realized that uh, the ladies uh, won't match up to my skills. And <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Lord, okay. Rather. And allow them oh, you to won't match yeah. up. No, 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 no. no. I mean, if you look at bright, <laughs> you know, the ladies. And won't then match I, up. I approached them that, look, let me mm. be the chaperone. Mm. And they've agreed. Job. Yeah, they have agreed. Wow. Uh, I'm a, what, what region do you belong to? Because you have a bit of you mm. from this side, I a know. bit of you from so that side. Virtually, I'm from Ghana. So, yes, so all the 10 regions <laughs> I buy for I'm Ghana. Have a huge constituency when they win, they, I do. All right. Anyway, so guys, it's time for headlines. Mm. We'll start with a finder. Mm. And it says free SHS, not for repeated students, affected students to pay own fee for extra years. Then mobile penetration drops by 12%. Also, government to limit discretionary powers of customs officials. That's coming from the vice president. And then power China to invest $4 billion into power generations. And finally, EC chair was on a mission to destroy deputies. That's coming from Mr. Sule there. I have been thinking mm. uh, when this uh, free uh, senior high school was announced, uh, mm. Initially, I revised my plans for my family. Okay. I said, oh, we can do two more. All right. Yeah, now that, uh, <laughs> now that it, will be free, it will be free, we can why add why on to it. Why add two more? Hmm. So, well, the family agreed, mm. let's add two more. But then after last night's press conference, uh, mm. again, we'll revise our notes. <laughs> That's uh, Because who knows? Cafe no. <laughs> <laughs> See, but like, my <laughs> worry is that, mm. okay, so a, a, a child enters first year. Mm. Right he or she passes to the second year, mm. and then he or she is unable to make it to the third year. Mm. He's uh, um, uh, repeated, ca ca as we call Yes, it. yes. So he can or she can't pay, right. so she drops out. Mm. Have we won or we have lost? 
I think we've lost in that We've scene. lost. I mean, to a very, end, very large extent. You've paid for um, two years, yes. and then the person drops out. You've lost resources. Because what, what we've been talking been about is mm -hmm. not just about access, but quality as well. Yeah. Exactly. So we've been asking, uh, we want to roll out the program in mm. September. Yeah. Do we have the classrooms? Do we have the teachers? Uh, we say we're going to give them free lunch. Uh, do we have the dining halls available? Mm. Uh, the feeding program, how do we intend to prosecute it? Do we have the funding to mm. do that? Do we even have the syllabus? I mean, you go to some of the schools and textbooks to even instruct the children mm. uh, is not there. The pedagogical approach, are, are we going to change it so that the students find subjects like maths and science more appealing? Yeah. These are the parameters that I was hoping that we would hear, uh, you we know, the conversation okay. on, mm. but not... Uh, the residual issues of if you don't make this, you will not get this. You remember also that when the president met the, the press, mm. the issue about the, the grading system from the GHS mm -hmm. onward to SHS was also a big issue, where wow. say the cutoff point mm. and all of that. Largely, you would agree that, well, you need to pass your exam to benefit from a certain scheme. But where we perhaps deliberately, because the conditions are mm. not there, we are not completing our processes, mm. would want people to miss out on what they they may want to enjoy, okay. then it becomes a big problem for us. Yeah, and definitely, like you said, we have to look at it critically because, of course, there are many things that would warrant a child being repeated. Let's take, for instance, a family, like a parent is sick and this mm. child is the only mm. person who can help and is asked to go home to go and support the parents and mm. they come back. Because of that, obviously, they mm. may miss writing an exam mm. and that qualifies for you to repeat because mm. once you don't sit an entrance right. exam, naturally, e you don't e make it to e the next. So something like that, will that qualify for the person losing all mm. that they've acquired just to pay for even one year? We're not saying we have an mm. issue with paying because now they even pay. But of course, if you are planning to mm. roll something like that out and you identify certain issues that obviously repeat repetition for me will be a big we're not saying the children should go and not study. Well, we mean, hope that I'll your I'll child I'll goes to school to study, to pass <laughs> exam, and come out better. But these things are real. They can happen for whatever reason, even, even such as being sick. The bare fact of so. not having washrooms and bathrooms <laughs> for the girls to change their sanitary mm. parts Could is warrant. a big problem. Because mm. if girls miss school, yeah. not because they want to, but sometimes because... Uh, the conditions are just not there for them exactly. to go and swap yeah. their parts. And yeah. so they would rather stay at home where they can bat twice or thrice and change their parts and feel more comfortable around that time right. of the month. Because grappling that with menstrual cramps and with feeling yeah, uneasy and all of that. Mm. So we need to look at uh, the dynamics of the issue really well than just put out a caveat to mm. say, mm. if you don't make it in first year, second year, then you're off the scheme. Uh, Johnny, I will, I will say that the issues of uh, infrastructure, the issues of perhaps uh, logistics, mm -hmm. uh, we, can, we, can, we can deal with it. We know uh, this part of the world where infrastructure has always been a, a, a problem for mm -hmm. us. So if classrooms are not there, kitchens are not there, dining halls are not there, uh, the, the women who do the cooking uh, we'll find a way to get our students to eat. But <coughs> I, am, I am worried about, I go to Form 1, okay, for a reason I'm unable to pass. We've spent two years, <laughs> the, the idea of this free senior high school is to carry everyone along, exactly. those who cannot even pay. Now, after universal. two years of spending some monies on him or her, we said because you failed in your final uh, exam mm. and you were not promoted, we won't pay for you again. Mm. Genuinely, this person can't pay, so he or she packs his luggage and is <laughs> sitting at home. He or she becomes a burden on us. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps uh, he or she might even become a deviant in society. Yeah. And so have we gone or we have come? So Thank I think you. that the education ministry and uh, whoever put together this would have to go sit down and look at it again. Right. I think right. we can, even if we said we won't pay, we have to meet them halfway mm -hmm. mm. because we will be making a mistake. Look, mm. I know the American system. Mm. It carries every student along. It doesn't right, leave anyone right. behind. And, and no you matter see, how dull you and are. And you see, the other time I was given an example of mm. the American system where, for example, if you are not too good in class, mm. but you are active in the community, you right. know how to help the elderly, the aged, mm. uh, the younger people, and you offer some service to the community. That is transposed into some marks for you, yeah. say 10 marks for you. If you're a sports person, mm. that's transposed. So you move along with the system. Exactly. And that's how come we got the Michael Phelps mm -hmm. and, and the Michael the Jordans point. and the other people who will later come to win <laughs> Olympic medals <laughs> for their countries and we'll celebrate them and we'll still yeah. compete with them. So, so we must on. have you know, we a process to carry everybody along. Somebody, somebody must mm. protest this mm. decision. 
indeed, if it's been but agreed Brian, you, you remember back, back in product. secondary school, you would have people who enter with sports. Yes. And that's the point and I was they, going they, to make that sports. Back home, right. back home here, you have several schools that would admit students, not because they pass the, the exams, right. but because they they're, good they're good in yeah. sports. And we can name <laughs> many. Yeah. Uh, okay? We're no, don't let anyone think that we are asking students not to go to school and learn. And but learn you right. can never have a school where every student can make the grade. Exactly. It doesn't happen. And it then, doesn't, of course, we're not in, a, in this kind of world. Of we course. might be in some, in other, some other spiritual world. So please, as for this world. issue of <laughs> repeated and we won't pay for you, I guess that somebody will need to draw mm. someone's attention. Mm. There is something wrong somewhere. It, but, but you see, it, what we, it, we the, the other bigger picture that it creates is the growing number of remedial students mm. who are right. I mean, the, the remedial exam is mm -hmm. ongoing. Yeah. You, you need to go to the centers and yeah. see how full the halls are. Mm. And if we're serious as a country, we'll be thinking about these things. How is it that people go through three years of secondary education, mm. they're not able to pass mm. a large chunk of them and then we'll have to come back and then some have written for four, five, six times. Mm -hmm. We need to stop and ask ourselves questions. What is it that we're getting wrong with our educational system? Mm -hmm. Are we doing something right? Are we doing it wrong? What do we need to change? Okay, so the teachers, even how they teach, um, is, it, is it appealing to the students who want to learn? Mm. I had a conversation with um, lawyer Nibia Ibote who was telling me about mathematics. And he had a very interesting way of teaching mathematics that, well, draw an integer, for example. All the numbers on the left are negative. All the numbers on the right are positive. And then he put an equal sign in the center. Mm. So it means that each time a number crosses over, right. it, gains, it gains polarity. If it, mm. it, it crosses, it decreases. And it's very it simple and basic. Easy. And it made it so exciting. Exactly. So exciting. You know, mm. so we need to start looking at some of these things. Yeah. Uh, we, we, need we, to, we, we really, we really need issue. to. Because, I, see, uh, at the end of the day, we will pay for it. Definitely. So and, it, and throw our money away. So throw, yes. Because yeah. after paying for two years, the, the person drops out. And so uh, our, our, our desire to get at least some benefit from him or her mm. after lost. paying the two mm. years, it's lost. Mm. Okay? I remember the days of the, the, the traditional O-level and A-level. A-level, level. right. You, you, you could not armor your, your area. You, you need to make an A, a B to get into medical school. Mm. Do you know what was happening? This is, th th this is fact. Mm. Students who made D and E's, okay, managed mm. to, to get out of this country right. and entered medical schools right. there. Right. And they came back as doctors. Mm. Okay, so it tells you that. And, and some are even yeah. better. <laughs> well, I don't know, Johnny. I don't no, want to go no. there. I'll no. give you, I, 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 I give you an example. No, um, I don't want to go there. Uh, professor, Professor, um, what was his name? Is uh, it uh, Ajima Bedou Akosa? Professor Ajima Bedou Akosa yeah, had a lecture. That, yeah. He had a lecture at, um, it was an AYPA mm. lecture, Anglican Young People's Association lecture, at the, one of the hotels in Accra. And he says that at the time, the dean of the medical school was you know, not allowing people to go through. Yeah. And then he called him and he says, Chief, me and you, like if be this grade that they collect, me and you will go there. <laughs> like me and you will go be doctor. You know, I, so I think that sometimes okay. we just mm -hmm. tweak the thing so hard. Yeah, so and look, look, <sighs> look, look yeah. how do you, no, no, we have to look no, but how do you even assess board. somebody mm. by just two hours test score exactly. and We've say that he's that not that way. Somebody yeah, comes okay. somebody comes to school, <laughs> he doesn't ask a simple question, a single question right. throughout the year. And he yes. doesn't even talk, he doesn't mm -hmm. make a suggestion, mm -hmm. he's quiet all through, he's anti so and everything. Then he goes to chew poor pass exactly. and forget. And you want to say that person is perhaps far greater mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. the one who comes Look, to see. Okay. Last year, last year mm -hmm. at the National Science and Mass Grade, when a disco won, mm -hmm. there's something that their instructor said, which I find very instructive. He said, the students who came to represent a disco at that time mm -hmm. were not the sharpest of the team, right. but they were the, the ones who were vocal, who were active, <laughs> who were, had mm -hmm. some speed and poise. Mm -hmm. But the really, really sharp ones, they didn't come onto the stage. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. am hoping that someone is listening and that the, the, the so. education minister will go back. Dr. Michael Pukuprempe, this one, we're, we're, it's, 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 a, it's a plea from yeah. us. Mm. I think like that too. this one, we need to uh, have a second thought about right. it. Mm -hmm. it it's, it we will be wasting our money. Mm. It, 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 look, mm -hmm. I know, for instance, it, it, in the three northern regions, because mm -hmm. they are already enjoying the free uh, senior high school, if you feel you are dismissed, mm -hmm. okay, that is a waste of our resources. Because you dismiss a person, and the person simply will go home and, and, and mess up. Mm -hmm. We have wasted every cent spent on, on him or her. Mm. Let's take another look at it. We can't leave some behind. Definitely. Right.
Okay. okay. Let's yeah. check some other ones. We'll take, we'll take a break at this point. Uh, good morning to you, uh, Dr. Matthew Poku Prepe, Minister for Education. A big, big, big good morning to you. We'll take a break at this point. We'll be right back. God, a miracle working God, but what if you got to pay for your miracle? I don't know about that, but uh, let's check out some of the portals on 3news.com and Mugabe's wife urges him to name uh, her as if the presidency in Zimbabwe is some <laughs> royalty <laughs> uh, monarchy, Family if you will. <laughs> Interesting. That has been passed on. See, the man is sleeping. You know the man came to sleep in Ghana? He said he wasn't sleeping. He was what? Mm -hmm. um, he was in thought, I mean deep thought. He was okay. pondering over the things he had okay. heard and what, you know. After 90, you, you always be thinking. <laughs> I know, uh, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, and uh, well, Ashanti region court orders woman to be killed for poisoning three-year-old boy to death. Uh, she's a 24-year-old. But is, is our death penalty still in force? We, yes. I thought we, but, but, well, but nobody has been, yeah, nobody has been killed yeah. yet. Yeah. Is there? <coughs> when I become the president, I'm going to uh, order people killed. Really? Uh, but the court said they should be killed too. Okay, so then you just enforce the orders of the court. Yes, I am not okay. doing it. It's the court that has said As, as it is now, yeah, we're only feeding people. <laughs> we're feeding but them. But you know in Ghana, we'll say you did it. Yeah, but uh, yes, but, but I, I didn't do it alone. So the, the, court, the court said no, they should be killed. No, don't say you. They'll mention your name too. Oh, okay. Your children will come but, but to the extent that if somebody kills another person, I'm poisons only the child deliberately, yeah. uh, I mean, what's the, what's the rationale? What's the point? <laughs> People are wicked in this country. But I personally wish that penalties are taken out because I find it cruel. I mean, I think it's inhumane. In as much as someone may have committed a very bad, terrible offense, mm. we're not good. It's okay. a, I mean, maybe life imprisonment, that should be enough. Mm -hmm. And then we feed okay. that person. Oh, Is that what you're suggesting? God, but all the criminals, yeah. we still feed them anyway, okay. so God, doesn't really make okay. a difference. God won't sanction uh, um, uh, killing. Hmm. Anyway, I, don't think I thought so. when the Egyptians were more treating the Israelites, he asked Moses to kill one of them. When you hear God say, yeah. you go and do it. Yeah. Now, when you get to heaven, God will say, yeah. well, <laughs> well done, good and faithful. The firstborn <laughs> children were killed. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Ghana is the best place to invest. Palmiato Bolt Maltese investors. That's the pre president of Malta uh, with our vice president there. Nana Danko, also uh, chairman of the Ghana Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. there, president there. And uh, Ghana making progress in malaria fights survey. Well, we've been told this when we had the National Malaria Day, yeah. and I think that um, we're, we're still making progress. Good morning to you. Progress in what? Dr. Linda Van Otu, in the fight malaria against. Fight. We are not making progress. You Ma see, malaria. We, you see, Johnny, we, yeah. you see, I, I think that our, our, our public officials should be honest and le let us know oh, that. Right. This is the not being honest. Yes, they not. See, oh, the right. problem with malaria is mm. that once our drains remain open, mm. There are choked gutters, mm. exposed drains will continue to have malaria. Mm. If we are attempting to fight malaria, it doesn't, for me, it doesn't mean progress. Okay. We are just, we, we, it is like waiting for you to be struck and okay. then you fight it. Okay, Why so can't we fight the, the, the source of the problem? Okay. Right. And then when you are rather re, uh, re, reacting, you say you are making progress. So it's making any progress. The 2016 Malaria Indicator Survey report has been launched in Accra. The report shows Ghana is making progress in the fight against malaria. However, a lot more needs to be done to achieve targets. The report is the first stand alone malaria indicator survey conducted in Ghana on the Ghana Demographic and Health Survey Program. The report shows prevention practices is on the rise in the country. Thus, ownership of long-lasting insecticide-treated mosquito nets has doubled in the last eight years. Therefore, more than seven in 10 households now own LLIM compared to 31% in 2008 yeah. and 64% in 2014. Let me stay on that. You know, with yeah. the um, insecticide treated mosquito mm. nets, mm. they are being owned. 
But whether they're being used is a different thing. Mm. Ownership does not necessarily translate to being used. Because we've been seeing too many malaria cases. When you ask the woman, oh, a mosquito net. She says, I'm mudem derbi adeng eyashi. It doesn't tell you. See, so I you're giving the nets to try and protect I, I, the children. I, I, at least for the adults, if look, you don't want it, that's your own head. I, I did, but for the children, I keep did, them protected. I did some work with the Ghana Health Service and the Johns Hopkins University and the USA as well. We called it the Good Life Game Show. Right. The problem that the mosquito nets had was that when you take it out, you need to air it. Yeah. So you can get some air through it and then the sex is that People yeah. open it and then they just go you to lie in it. it. So their bodies start itching. It feels hot and mm. all so of that. Moved from that the kind of part. education. Now it's just it's hot. Okay. Some are even using it to fish. Yes, <laughs> I went to I went mm. to Intranua around <laughs> Ankafo and people had used it to cordon off their yes. farms. Mm. Uh, AJ. You know why I am I am just listening. <laughs> no. So the basic issue is that let us uh, get out of our society these mm. open drains. Don't allow water to stand. Mm. Mm. Malaria is dealt with. Yeah. Why do we even and construct gutters and, 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 and don't yes. cover them? And, and some of our gutters have reversed. And then we are told we are so making <laughs> progress. What kind of progress is it? Progress yeah. that is taking you back. So Go to every hospital in Ghana and check the number of malaria cases reported mm. every morning. You'll be amazed about it. AJ looks as malaria as is more dangerous than <laughs> HIV AIDS. It can <laughs> kill you in a second, and yet <laughs> we joke about it. And, uh, and in well, the rainy season, you see so many more. Yeah. So they yeah. should AJ, really do good morning. Have good you been bitten by a mosquito uh, lately? I'm just thinking of that Ephia song, Weather for Two, right now. Well, somebody told me that if you're contemplating on the weather to want to go and do something, think about the cost of hot tea. <laughs> and pompous. So my father is here. Any, any cause that I can hear. Let's see the news, my brother. I see. Right. We got news from Parliament. We got news from around Ghana coming in right after this. Now to Parliament, where the minority has accused the Speaker of disrespecting and frustrating them, the group threatened to boycott proceedings if the trend continues. This follows what the minority says is the Speaker's refusal to recognize both the minority leader and minority chief whip during proceedings Thursday. The Minister of Food and Agriculture had appeared before Parliament to answer questions on the expenditure, participation and status of the Planting for Food and Jobs program. After some MPs had asked their questions, the Speaker then told the minority leadership to ask their questions. The minority chief whip Muntaka Mohamed Mubarak took his turn. When he was done and the minority leader rose to ask his questions, the Speaker had a challenge indicating when he says leadership, he means one person speaks for the front bench. When I rose, I specifically, and I want the hands that if you want to print it for you, I said I will make an application to contest your ruling. It was respect for the rules. I was unhappy about your ruling, but because I respect the rules, I sent you notice that I will make an application. The speaker then moved on to the majority leadership, disallowing the minority leader from asking his questions. The minority chief whip, who was also on his feet for a couple of minutes, was also overlooked. And when he had the opportunity, he vented his anger. The day before yesterday, there were questions that were supposed to be asked yesterday in this house. They were not on the other paper. You didn't give us the opportunity to raise them. Yesterday, we advertised there were questions to be asked today again. They have not been put on the other paper. You are not giving us the opportunity to even air our views. If the speaker thinks we should not be here to air our views and concerns of our side, we will be ready to walk out so that you can out the business with only the majority. Why? Mr. Speaker, so is my colleague, the chief whip for the minority, is unhappy about a directive or a ruling by the speaker. The avenues are open to the person. This is not the first time the minority has complained about the conduct of the speaker. We are frustrated by the way he's running the house. And we, we are assuring him, if we don't see change in the way he conducts business in the house, definitely we will advise ourselves. We are just reminding him we are at least the minority. We have more than one third of the house. 
and he knows the implication of what I mean, that we have at least more than one third of the house. The Minister of Food and Agriculture, Dr. Uswe Friyakoto, says the fall armyworm is under control and has expressed hope to record zero infection by next year. He said 14,413 farmlands have so far been destroyed by the disease. He was answering questions on the floor of Parliament. The minister said 112,812 hectares of farmlands were affected by the fall armyworm and 14,413 hectares of farmlands destroyed. The fall armyworm invasion has been defeated by my government. We are in anticipation of the surpluses that we are expecting. We are making frantic efforts in order that we will store and make sure that not one single bean or one single grain is lost at the farm gate because of lack of markets. On the Planting for Food and Jobs program, the minister said over 157 million cities have so far been spent in the major cropping season with costs for the minor season yet to be received by the ministry. He also indicated 188,338 farmers have been registered for the program, out of which 34,000 have been captured electronically. What concrete steps have been taken towards the construction of warehouses? We are taking stock of all warehouses around the country to see in which districts there are no storage facilities so that we can then uh, target these warehouses to construct the facility for them. Still in Parliament, an agreement between Ghana and the United States on the resettlement in Ghana of two former Guantanamo Bay detainees, Mahmoud Umar Mohammed bin Atef, Khalid Mohammed Sali al Dubi, has been laid. Ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Samuel Okujoto Ablakwa, speaking off camera, said he had filed a question to ask the Minister of Foreign Affairs the position of government on the two former detainees in Ghana. But he complained although the speaker admitted the question and was captured on the Wednesday order paper, it was removed from the Thursday agenda, which he finds strange. The Controller and Accountant General's Department will from August withhold salaries of heads of departments who fail to validate their staff for payment. According to the department, in July this year alone, more than 22,000 unknown employees on government's payroll were paid without validation. In April this year, 5,544 unknown employees, but not missing, were paid by the controller without validation. 14,555 employees were deemed missing, but had names on the payroll also received salaries. This represents 20,999 employees whose names should have been suspended, but were paid without validation. Controller again says in May this year, 5,200 unknown employees were paid without validation, while 11,000 310 employees were also not validated but received salaries. Eugene Ofosuhini is the head of controller and accountant general's department. July this month, you know, we paid yesterday, the vouchers are gone. So those unknown guys will go to the bank, they walk to the bank and cash the money. Those unverified or unvalidated they will go to the bank and cash their salary. Hey, August, it will not happen. However, the controller and accountant general blamed heads of departments for failing to validate their staff to assist controller receive accurate figures. Controller has therefore warned all those heads to begin the validation for the month of August or risk forfeiting their salaries. The first category is HODs who suffer non-payment and their staff who are known but not validated. That is the first category. Second category will stop salaries of employees who are declared unknown but not missing. Nobody has owned them. So we don't know, nobody knows them. They are unknown. They, are, they also will be blocked. He again charged the heads not to deliberately punish their staff for failing to validate them. If your employee has not come to work or has 
for any reasons obvious to you, you want to penalize or sanction him, don't use the validation exercise to sanction your employee. Find any, any other means. If you want to probably go, go to a farm place and get a land and put him on that land to, 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 to farm for you. But don't use our platform to sanction your staff. An Accra Central District Court has told the prosecution handling the murder case of the late Walker North MP to return to court in three weeks prepared instead of asking more time for investigations. This follows the prosecutor's constant request to be given more time to properly conclude with investigations. After rearresting the suspects in the murder of the former member of parliament, prosecution told the court more leads have been identified. In his last appearance, Deputy Superintendent of Police George Amega told the Accra Central District Court more time is needed to conclude with investigation. Appearing in court on July 27, DSP George Amega again told the court the investigator needs additional time to finish with investigations. The magistrate Arit and Simon told prosecution to return to court with better information rather than pleading for time. The two accused persons, Daniel Esidu and Vincent Bosso, were earlier discharged by the criminal division of the Accra High Court after the Attorney General filed the nolly prosecutor to discontinue with the prosecution. The two were, however, rearrested by the police immediately after the judge's orders were delivered. Well, that's it for the news this morning. Handing over to... <laughs> I'm tired, so join me right <laughs> now. And you're tired of fighting. I don't know. I'm, I'm just not tired. I'm just long, starting. It's been a long week. I'm, I'm just starting. Of course, it has. If you're already thinking long. about <laughs> some <laughs> songs. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's, <laughs> let's do some guys, of your messages. Yeah, Thanks very much, AJ. Uh, your messages here on our social media platform. And uh, TV3 crew, good morning. You're doing a good job. Keep the fire burning from Scorpion. And it says, Michael in Adesso, it says, as a teacher, I fully uh, support the three-year coverage. I'm sure you want to mean uh, by covered by government is sound. GES and the ministry do not do promotions. A person must, uh, a person with a special condition can be promoted if the condition satisfies the school. Schools are doing this already. A wholesale um, coverage will defeat the... Uh, the aim of the government to using the program to promote academic performance. This will rather act as an incentive to push every student to do his or her utmost best. My but question Johnny, but was the Johnny, idea they, to promote they, academic they, performance? The issue of promoting academic performance mm. is nowhere near this free senior Not high school. The, the, the cardinal mm. point is that a lot of us were left behind because we could not fund our, our education right. exactly. at that level. That's why we're paying free. So uh, the teacher who sent this, uh, please, yeah. I, the yeah. issue of academic yeah. performance isn't part of this. Mm. Even though we're not, you see, don't let anyone think that we're saying that. The student it, should go to school and, and, and not learn. No, exactly. that's not what we're saying. But genuinely, some people will be thrown out of school yeah. because they can't fund uh, yeah. the one year uh, uh, that they'll miss right. because right. they you know failed. That, that's you know that we're in making. our secondary school, some persons enter as science students. Then maybe second year, they, they realize switch. that they're still not pushing. So yeah. they would want to repeat and start with and arts yes. or change their <laughs> course or program. Yes. It does. If some, su such a person... Uh, is not covered, then what's the point, really? I mean, it definitely is not going so to promote academic to promote performance, so let's not even bring that in. Because, mm. you see, we're, suppo and we're supposed to have guidance and counselling units in our schools. <laughs> Never mind that they are just on paper, because in most of the schools, they they're are non-existent. Mm. So if a student is failing his exam mm. or her exam, there's supposed to be a counsellor on campus who says, mm. come and let me run you through. Mind you, yeah. some of these counselors are even teachers who yeah. have their own subjects that they are teaching. Mm -hmm. So they don't have enough time to even dedicate to the children. Exactly. Mm. The problems that we have are, are holistic, and we need to look at them carefully. Mm -hmm. Anyway, my question is, who is going to pay the recurring fees? Is it a fresh student or continuing students? Because what I know is in my school, day students already are paying 101 CDs plus and borders are paying 622 CDs. You guys need to scrutinize the policy well, well, or Ernest in price on call. And the free education will not see the green light of the day because how much is Nana and Baumia government promising to increase teachers' salaries for the day? When I was given an adage by my grandfather that you need to wash your saw uh, properly before you apply medicine to cure it. The need to increase the teacher's salary before they talk about free education from Yakubo in Wale Wale. Good morning, TV3 and all workers of uh, the station. My dream of getting free education is not Nana and Baumia government type of free education, but progressive type in the quality 
and uh, not Nana and Baumia government quantity type of to start uh, in 2017-2018 academic year from Yakubu Walewale. And from KMEN says, can we ever have free SHS? Is asking. Uh, we have nothing scholarship, yet some schools uh, took as much as 100, uh, 1,100 from parents in the northern region. So where is the so-called free education in the north? Good morning, Nanama, Bright and Johnny. Thank you. Uh, from Kojo in the end, he said, I doubt if Education Minister consults the right people before his pronouncements. The other day, he created the impression that teachers get uh, automatic promotions, which has never been the case. Hi, please, I'm watching you. Can you please uh, wave me? Yes, we're <laughs> waving at you now, all of us, oh, all three of us. Uh, <laughs> good morning to the awesome um, JAB. Uh, passing all nine subjects taught by nine different teachers is not easy. Oh. How to sustain the policy is what we want to hear, not how to implement. Mm. Uh, Abra from Bukum. Alasa Mwana Iwa says, now Ghanaians are happy for their black and white TVs who have been chained to color TVs. Just within six months in government, the CD is stabilized. Prices of fertilizer are resubsidized by 50%. Muses taxes removed. Planting for food and jobs creation to increase food production and free SHS to boost education. God bless President Anado and MPP. Free things cost, Mr. Bright. That's to you. Uh, TV3, good morning. Thank you for your good work you're doing for the nation. You're doing great work. God bless you. Christopher and Wasa. Uh, to be asking, good morning, TV3. Please, I want to know if education is about going to school no. only. Well, definitely no. not. Good morning, TV3. Please, I want to know if education is about going to school. Uh, Ismaila Horoya Ali is asking, no, it is not just, you see, but, but formal education means that you need to have yeah, some structured mm -hmm. uh, you know, form of uh, learning but and instruction. Mm -hmm. Well, good morning, my handsome and beautiful brothers, uh, TV3. Please, I think Nana in the education minister should Google the meaning of free. Hmm. The Bible said it, and they uh, shall know them by their fruits. Good morning, pretty lady and gentlemen. I think the Minister of Education, together with his deputies, have to relook at the policies of a free SHS. Initially, there was a cut-off point, which I disagree with the Minister. The Minister should know that we are looking at the end result, not the beginning. Malik Adama, please. The free SHS is for some, is for three years. So if you are repeated in Form 2, you will still enjoy it. Uh, would cut in Form 3 and you have to pay in Form 3. Joe in Tichima said that. Thank you very much, Joe. Uh, good morning, my dear TV3 crew members. Do you put off your ties on every Friday? Uh, because I could see both Bright and Johnny without their ties, which I always cherish. I suggest all of you there make every Friday a symbolic Ghana day by putting on your kente and a dinkra every Friday. Good luck. Uh, Michael Awe and Abuja is a, is a director of Mrs. Uh, Duga who told us not to wear a tie today. So we have, we have told you. Your standing oh, counterpart right. seems to know so much about pedagogy. Don't you think the classroom will be best for him? Good day from Abetifi. Yes. Are you the standing counterpart? Yes. <laughs> I, 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 I <laughs> well, I'm a teacher as well. Um, oh, not, God. not trained by GS or anybody else. I'm a teacher. If, in fact, TV3, you guys make every morning boza for me. Mr. Bright, uh, in terms of money, in terms of money show, and uh, you are number one. Uh, Woody size what if from Kenji from German South to both to be precise, up in BA, right? Uh, from Sir Fresh at the Santi Jabin says, if His Excellency Nanado and his government can't do the free SHS policy, they should stop. What is the BEC pass mark or qualification mark? And the Honourable Minister is talking about. Is it aggregate 42 or it was last year or is it aggregate 20 as we are hearing? Can, you can lie your way to power and face the realities on the grounds in government. The Education Ministry should come again on their so-called free SHS. And good morning, please. My issue is about EaseWish. I would like to know if the ease wage you register at GCP is different from ADB and GN Bank because my friends who have begun their registration with the NSS are complaining about the NSS officials who are rejecting their ease wage from particular banks. Please help me out on that. Thank you very much. Um, I think that they, I don't know what it is, but I think the issue is about the biometrics and trying to mm. fish out those who are uh, repetitive national service persons. You know, people have made it their job. Mm. Uh, five, ten, six years, they're doing national service. Oh. Some, too, have done it already, but they go and register and pass on oh. their chip to people. So we'll get some responses we'll for you later. Uh, absolutely. And um, let's get to the basic schools and find out what the needs of education are. When the basic schools don't have classrooms, SHS is made free. Isn't it ironical? We always build from mm. top to bottom. Good morning, TV3. You people are already the best of all. Did I hear the education minister say that Ghanaians are too difficult to govern? Haha, <laughs> wonderful. No problem at all. Come 2020, we're going to retire them with our votes. Inshallah, who forced them? 
Uh, Alas, our one and one says, okay, that. so we, s we read this one already. And uh, I always set my alarm before I sleep just to listen to Senior Bright, frankly speaking, and the truth. God bless you. Uh, we need journalists like you across uh, Ghana. JQ in Pokwasi, he sent that mm -hmm. one. So I see. those are our messages. Right, but you know, uh, yesterday mm -hmm. was uh, uh, our day for most of the children. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a photo I wanted to show you. A lot uh, of them are coming home this morning. Yes, uh, yes, today, yes. this afternoon, yes, and uh, yes. it promises to be exciting. Yes. When they're around, they are new sons, but when they go away, <laughs> you, <feel laughs> the, the you miss them. <laughs> it becomes quiet. Mm. <laughs> Pardon me, if yeah, that's, that's the word new sons is too strong. Yeah, well, right today right. is World Hepatitis Day, mm. so definitely we're talking about hepatitis, because last week, I mean, over the week, you got so many people coming here to talk to us about hepatitis. Mm. You should know about it by now, and you should go out there to Screen and as I say, to be immunized if you have to be. Mm. Please, let's go out there. Hepatitis is real. Actually, yeah, it, it is. kills the, the, faster the, than the HIV would. Yes. The misconception very, yeah. is what the worry is. Mm -hmm. Some have uh, always carried it that if you have uh, unprotected sex, that's when right. you have it. But no. you can get it. But it's Other not, it's not like that. Yes, yes. Oh, so you, give you, you, you need to go out there and, yeah. and, and get. But um, how yeah. would you respond if you were in a plane and you found out that you looked into the <laughs> window and you found out your pilot? Uh, was <laughs> flying out with a parachute and says, I was your pilot. So he is not in the plane. <laughs> you are there alone. Oh, what, what would I you do? i say, Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> because at you that point, unless his assistant pilot is at the wheel. Okay, maybe I the assistant is there. Uh, or maybe the co-pilot. Or, or maybe the co-pilot is already gone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe it's just a hoax. Anyway. Okay. But, but yesterday was um, oh, our wow. day, as I said, right? Oh, and, really? Uh, yeah. This, this, oh. this is our day. Johnny, proper. I love that. Oh, yeah, but our day we share. Yeah. So she I eating all that alone. Yeah, but this yeah. one too has a food. Our day, this. you know, back in the day, our day you would you would form, you yeah. know, a horseshoe and everybody yeah. has their bowl or plate in I front of them. And see, the saucepan is new. Yes, it's The labels are on it. Oh yes, for our yes. days, our <laughs> day special. So you don't. And yeah. I remember, I, I I did a lot of banquet and okru uh, during our days. Mm. There were a lot of banquet and okru, uh, and that's for what, our days. Yes, for our day. That's what my people prefer. So a mm. uh, <laughs> big bowl of banquet and then yeah. okru. But, but can she eat this? These are our two cups mm. of rice. Oh. No, it's, uh, John, it's going to be the for cups. the whole day. Like four. It's going to be for yeah. the whole day, from morning, afternoon, and perhaps after after closing. Mm -hmm. You know, they will stay around yeah. and clear, and yeah. so uh, <laughs> they'll come back to we'll it. They'll come back to it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But there's so two. Anyway, no, it doesn't yeah. matter. I still for us kids, I'm, I'm wondering, was it from the school or the parents? <laughs> no, 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 this one is from home. It. It's, it's from home. She's happy, eh? Yeah. Yeah. She's of very she happy. Is. Yeah. Anyway, Tilapia has some news <laughs> for us, and I should like for us to check out what Tilapia has for our us. Our days are exciting. Uh, tell yes, you. our days very are exciting. exciting. Uh, yeah. Tilapia, welcome, Tilapia. Yeah. So, this is it. Uh, this is what it, it looks like. Uh, Dr. Edward Muhammad, yeah. Ambassador at Large with our, what, is this Atik Muhammad? That's Atik Muhammad. Yeah, it says. Uh, Small He's boys. pushed him uh, down the valley. Yes, small boys oh. are young. You okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Yes, we'll take a break. But, <laughs> okay, so this is the trending thing right now. Okay. Um, the Pontius Pilate oh, is okay. the Chief Justice. And uh, the president there, there's a petition, says over to you, and you have prying <laughs> eyes, say, crucify, crucify her. her. And that's uh, Charlotte Silas, who, who looks like Jesus. Mm. Um, yeah, you see there's... Uh, a crown, a kind crown, of a crown yeah. in here. And the last time Pilate had an issue like that, is it not when he washed his hands? Yes, off his yes. Hand? But I don't see water and soap. So <laughs> Maybe it's behind the scenes. So she'll go and wash her hands over. Anyway, guys, we'll take a break at this point. We'll be back. Stay with us. <laughs> The finder starts this morning and says free senior high school not for repeated students, affected students to pay own fees for extra years. Uh, also on the finder, mobile penetration drops by 12%, government to limit discretionary powers of customs officials. That's according to the vice president. And the uh, EC chair was on a mission to destroy deputies. That's uh, one of the deputies there talking, uh, Mr. Ahmadou Suli. Uh, Gold Street Business says National Lottery Authority targets 250 million uh, cities annually as it moves to certify, uh, I think, banker to banker operators by end of year. The Independent says the era of reckless borrowing is over, Dr. Baumia. The Independent also carries the free senior high school story and says uh, program, uh, free senior high school program, NAPO clears the air. The statement says, all said, 
for free senior high school and other newspapers I have with me this morning. We'll talk about these. And now the guest this morning to do the talking, a member of the NPP's communication team and a legal practitioner, Gary Nimakon, is here with me. Good morning. Good morning. Well, Hope right. you're doing great. Well, uh, it's better. Thanks so much for your Friday morning. Mm -hmm. And then the NPP, NDC's member of parliament for the Zap Zugu constituency, Honorable Alhassan Ruma, is also here. Good morning, too. Good morning. Hope you're doing great, too. Good. Thanks for your yeah. Friday morning, Pleasure. too. Pleasure. Now, let's start with the story in the Finder. Um, uh, Ghana will experience bumper harvest this year, Greek Minister assures. The story is saying that the Minister of Food and Agriculture uh, has assured that the battle against the invasion of the deadly fall army worm has been successful and um, urged the public to ignore speculations and propaganda from some section of the media that the government had failed to deal with the menace. Yesterday in Parliament, he spoke uh, on the floor. Let's quickly uh, listen to what he said and then we'll come back to the studio. ...has been defeated by my government. We are in anticipation of the surpluses that we are expecting, we are making frantic efforts in order that we will store and make sure that not one single bean or one single grain is lost at the farm gate because of lack of markets. Mm. And that's what he told uh, members of parliament. Now, according to him, though, the destruction caused by the pest was unfortunate, it will not in any way affect the government policy to revive the agricultural sector since adequate measures were put in place to curtail uh, the menace. Uh, let's quickly uh, go to the uh, northern part of the country, precisely the northern region. Uh, correspondent uh, uh, Zubeda Ismail is there. Uh, she's been uh, talking to some of the farmers and uh, the agricultural officials there. Uh, Zubeda, good morning. Uh, the minister said that the battle has been won. Is that what you can gather from where you are? Um, um, Bright, what I can say is that um, for here in the northern region, it is too early for the minister to say that fight against the army worm infestation has been won because um, we have about 80% of the farmers here now planted. Now, the, the, the infestation that we recorded in the northern region here um, early uh, uh, this year was because some farmers went into early farming. And those farmers were about 20% of the total farmers population here. And so when I spoke to the Northern Regional Agri Director, um, he told me that, yes, for those that went into early farming, uh, we can say that the situation has been put in, uh, under control. And even some of them are harvesting. But majority of the farmers, as we speak, are planting. And so it is too early to say that we have won the fight against army work in this part of the region. Mm. Uh, Zubeda, we're grateful uh, this morning for your time. Zubeda Ismail is our correspondent there in the northern part of the country, precisely Tamale there. Uh, let me quickly come back to the studio. The, the, the finder story uh, simply says that uh, the ministry has supplied enough chemicals to every nook and cranny of the country, and chemicals in stock are enough to cover more than 25,000 hectares of lands. Uh, thankfully, these chemicals have worked effectively, and farmers have recovered their farms. The minister uh, noted. Now, let's start our conversation. Uh, Honorable uh, uh, Alassan Uma, let me start with you. It, we just heard that, well, some farmers uh, are now going to planting. We were also told, or we know, that the rains, uh, in a way, uh, are very good in dealing with the army, uh, uh, fall army. We saw the rains in Tamale and perhaps other areas. Perhaps based on that, uh, that is the reason why the minister is suggesting that the uh, battle has been won. Well, uh, uh, thank you so much, and uh, good morning to uh, the people of Zabzu. Um, as the news, uh, uh, the the news uh, correspondent has just uh, said, mm. it's too early. It's too early, and I also say, think that the minister is depending on uh, natural forces. Right. Because uh, if you go to, let me take my constituency. Zabzulu. Zabzulu. I don't think it is one. There are a lot of farmers. I just uh, returned from constituency about three weeks ago. And almost all the farmers that I met 
complain about it. And I'm not even sure about the, uh, you know, the report that the, the, you know, the sent uh, media, uh, what is the it chemicals. chemicals. It's not, it's, it's not, uh, maybe it's just in Accra here that we think we have sent chemicals to the, uh, the rural areas, but it is not, um, it's not report, it's not done as we have the it. Report the, the, report, the, the report in the final report. So uh, it's too early. To say that. Mm -hmm. uh, Gary, the, we, we saw the rains in Tamale and were told by experts that uh, the army for women is unable to withstand rains. So uh, perhaps, uh, is the minister relying on natural uh, forces to say that the battle is being won? And, and could he be right? <laughs> well, Brad, good morning. Uh, good morning mm -hmm. to Ravel and your cherished viewers. Mm. The battle against army web infestation has been won. Obviously, the minister will be depending on certain factors mm. and certain briefing and certain information and even the output of work and the result of the work that he has done so far to make that kind of conclusion that the battle has been won. Yes, there could be possibly few areas where maybe um, there could be the consensus should still be there, like what you, the, the, like what you showed us on, on, on your screen. Mm. There, there could be certain areas which needs to be addressed. What, what we're showing are, are, are far pictures, pictures we picked right from when the, 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 the worm uh, invaded. They are not current pictures. They are not current they pictures. Not current. Very well. If, if that is so, then, then yeah. that's fine. But I think that uh, we should all agree that uh, you know, agriculture is the backbone of our economy. Mm. And I mean, it doesn't even matter whether it's even an area, a small area, a big area, whatever it is, which has a worm infestation. Ministry must do whatever it takes to make sure that they eradicate every problem so that the farmers don't suffer. Mm. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you cannot just go and spend your money, you know, get your land, you know, plant the crops and all that, and then you have these, uh, you know, pesticides, weedy sides, and all those things enter the farm to destroy the farm. I don't think that's the way to go. So my, my line of thought is not to, to say that there are some itemized areas which are of concern mm. and they should be ignored. They should not be ignored. Even if it's just one farm, they should report to the relevant uh, authorities. We have extension officers, we have agriculture officers. They are all over the districts and all over the place. Report to them and get a requisite you know, chemical to make sure that they spray the, the place so that you can harvest at an appropriate time. That is the way I see it. So for me, I think the minister's commitment to ensure mm. that this canker is dealt with, that's, that is my concern. You can see the agency with which the minister made sure that every nook and cranny of our uh, country, they make sure that they send, they send supplies there. Can you, can you remember the uh, from something good just said that his constituency he didn't receive anything like oh, that. Oh, I mean, how? How is it possible that he, he, and, he just And if it is so, if it is so, if it is so, with all respect to my, my, my yes. learned brother, <laughs> if indeed, if indeed, you didn't receive supplies in your conscience or your district, what about my, did you report to the relevant agency? You didn't inform the minister, you are, you are, you are a member of parliament. Mm. You know, and the minister's door, let me land, please. Mm. The, the minister's doors, that if you go to a ministry, it's one of the ministries that you can always see that the ministry the door is always open. It's always open to receive visitors. So the question is, did you inform the minister or even the, or the staff or even your station officer or even the local authority, look, these farms have been infected by these, you know, uh, you know, worms, but you are not getting supplies. And if you did, you did. What response did you get? So that's why I'm saying that it is a minister's job to ensure that every farm that is infected by any other worm, whether guinea worm, whether army worm, whether whatever worm, should we make sure that they do the work? But the bottom, yeah. if we don't, if we don't, because the minister is in Accra, for instance, mm. if we don't report to the relevant uh, 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 extension officer or the relevant agriculture officer or the relevant, how would they know? You know, so I think it's incumbent upon you or the people who are the farmer to ensure they inform them that, oh, we have infestation in our farms. So that then they can take a shin to ensure that the work is done. So I think that by and large, by and large, the the based on those who did the early planting, who are now harvesting, the evidence says that well, the 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 the, the, the fight has been won. I think we should agree with him by and large. And for those who are now going to plant, they too, I think they should also make sure that the farm is properly 
you know, cordon, you know, be sprayed and everything. So at the end of the day, we don't have any, any, any problem with, with food. Because, they're right, if there is no food in this country, me and you can't survive. That's trouble. We have to import food from, from outside the country mm. to feed ourselves. You are doing it. I, I come back. Uh, Gary, I'll come back to you, but uh, quickly, a uh, reaction mm. to that. Uh, he said perhaps you didn't report to the appropriate uh, parties about well, the shortages. Well, I'm, I'm surprised because if you have to understand that the Agric Ministry is a decentralized, one of the earlier decentralized ministry and even up to date. And so for an event of that nature to happen, that means that chemicals should have been sent earlier to do what is called prevention. It wasn't done. And so if you think you are just spraying your farms, your plants, what about the weeds, the grass around? So you are not preventing anything. Currently, as we said, those farmers that got destroyed, at least the Ministry of Agri mm. should have even come out with some sort of uh, some incentive or uh, compensation, compensation, so that they can, uh, you know, replow. This is the last month for even planting, and so I a lot of acreage has been destroyed. Did you didn't report to the appropriate no, courts? Uh, well, we did, not personally, but looking at the farmers, from uh, you know reporting it to the technical officers. Mm. It's not only Zabzugu alone. I'm talking about, I'm just using Zabzugu constituency. As an example. As an example. Mm. It's national. And that is why we even, uh, these questions have gone to the minister earlier. There have been about two, three statements on army worms attacking Ghana, invading Ghana. And we're asking questions. Are you working with our neighboring countries? The problem is, we need to do prevention than to allow it to come and then you do firefighting. As recently, I don't need to, you know, even newspapers reported that uh, most, some of the chemicals that you said you provided were even uh, for, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't, it's not for, 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 for those. Uh, the mini the they ministry denies that. Right, right, yeah, yeah, the yeah, ministry denies that. I don't want to do, do, do mischief. Mm. Mm. mischief. I don't want to do mischief. But it wasn't. Right, right, right. May I, may I come well, in? I, 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 I'll get you in it because uh, I, I, I wanted to ask you this before I, I got to Honorable uh, Umar. In 2016, we were told that this same army for when hit our shores, we did not uh, attack it well. And so what we're experiencing uh, just, are just remnants of the, the fall army worm that stayed on and now are re-attacking. Now, the, the minister comes in and says, we have won the battle. Indications are that there could be one or two farms that still have the worms. Perhaps should the minister give us a more comprehensive a, 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 a address as to how it's been won and which farms still have the worms and how are we going to treat it so that they, they don't change into something else and re-attack next year? Yes, uh, mm. before I answer that question, mm. let, me, let me deal with this one before I answer that question. On the issue of prevention, uh, Honorable Obama made a very fantastic point here that uh, you have to prevent so that you don't have these worms now invading the farms mm. for you to now do firefighting. I agree with him entirely. I think prevention is better than cure. Right. And the question I want to ask is that to him, that when did these farmers start the planting? Now, did the planting start before 2017, the planning started just 2017. If it is so, was the minister in office in 2016 or he took office in 2017? Mm. And how could he have prevented something when he was not in office in the first place? Now, you see, I think that by and large, this idea that we have some time in our nation trying to lay blame on left and on right I think it should be a thing of the past. Because, you see, if, if, if a farmer started planting in 2016, mm. and then there's a crossover to 2017, you cannot lay blame on the, on the minister that, look, you did not ensure that prevention did not take place prior to the planting, when the minister was not even in office at all. 
when the minister had not even won elections at all. When the minister was, was campaigning to, 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 to assume the mantle of the leadership of the country. Mm. Right, you understand the point I'm making? Right. So, prevention at this stage cannot be laid at the doorstep of the minister because at that time he was not in office in the first place. Yeah. Now, on the, issue, on the issue of, the, of, of, of how comprehensive has the battle been won, I mm. think that I also want to agree with you that uh, we have to have guests and statistics to know which and which and which, uh, you know, farms. Uh, areas where, of the country, where, where regions, attacked, maybe districts. What was the level of the attack? And, and As we speak yeah. now, uh, how has it been controlled or has it been won? I mean, we have data so that we can now go and do cross checking to find out. Oh, if we go to farm, if we go to this district or this region, these farms were all attacked, and as of now, they have been eradicated. So we don't have, you know, a reoccurrence or a remnant of these, mm. uh, 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 you know, worms, worms you know, reoccurring uh, at the future day. The reason being that food security is important to all of us. Well, that brings food security mind. is important to all of us because I, I keep saying that without food security, all of us our lives will be in jeopardy. So, I mean, <coughs> this idea of trying to be shifting. No, no, no. I don't. I don't think it's, oh, a, it's oh my, a shift. Is, is, that, is that what you're doing? No, it's because. It, it, for instance, your government is blamed for failure to properly attack the worm in 2016, uh, just scratching the surface of the fight and leaving the worm to re regroup uh, and come back at uh, us again. Uh, not really. We did. And you have to understand. But agricultural experts have said no, that no. The, the four we are, we are seeing now are those that were not properly dealt with in 2016. It was. It was. If you read the news, mm. somewhere around January, February, the, we started reading news that the neighboring countries were experiencing uh, the, I mean, the worm. The worm. Then they were the uh, army worms. By then, President Nana Akufado had taken off. No, that was when? That was when? January to February. So when did they, when did planting, they, well, the planting started when? Look, yeah. maize just take 100 days, the longest. 100 days. If you plant maize, mm -hmm. so you are thinking about so, three. So you are so talking about three months. So this, this, so this you are talking this, about this, this Gary, you, you allow him. When to did they? When did they start? I will get you to come in. No, yeah. you are talking about only three months, and so for you to think that nobody did planting in December. We don't farm in December. We prepare lands, and sometimes December is a bit so hot. Nobody goes to land. You know, rain start coming somewhere Feb uh, March. And so these army worms started showing up with mid March, the middle of March coming up. <laughs> and so at that time, the Minister of Greek had to take in office. And all those reports coming, they should have been what? They should have taken care of it. Now, what I want, I want to disagree with the minister is that when you are in a war, battlefield, you don't announce, you know, who are you trying to intimidate? Tell it's <laughs> like uh, the Bob, Maybe Baghdad, they are, they are Baghdad Bob, <laughs> Baghdad Bob, saying that uh, nobody is in Baghdad when he went to the market square. Look, the army warm war is not yet won. No harvest. We haven't harvested our crops yet. We don't even know the tonnage. We have to harvest. It's all we can only declare. Uh, uh, the winning of war of the army uh, war against the army worm. After we have harvested our grains and beans, then yeah. we take the tonnage to compare what we have this year compared to last year. But what the minister is saying is just uh, you so, know. So uh, he is saying, for instance, that the planting for food and jobs program uh, is registered about 185,000 uh, out of 200,000 farmers and for the first two major crop seasons in the south and northern part. So uh, he is saying that that is an indication that uh, we might not experience food shortages. And that's why he thinks that uh, the army for worm uh, attack oh. has been defeated. Is it quantity or quality? <laughs> you know, it's not about number. Farming is not about number. It's about the scale of farming. You know, one per you know maybe one person can... F uh, cultivate more than 100 acres. But if you provide, you know, farming, planting for foods to peas and farmers, how much will that do? So this number doesn't, uh, doesn't cut the chase. I see. Got and it. I can tell well, you uh, also, <laughs> uh, this is quickly, not a mischief, planting for food. 
and so recently, on. recently, they despise fertilizers to constituencies and then they lock them up. If you are not a party, if you are not a party <laughs> person, you will not get fertilizer. Where is it coming yes. from? Yes. It's not. Look, is it in your constituency? Where is it, it coming from? <laughs> well, it's in my constituency on Nolufa. Your constituency had experienced yeah. this. Has experienced that. That fertilizer was fertilizer locked up. Fertilizer was in locked there. up. They are Greek, they, they are Greek uh, extension officers to sell it. They sack them. And pull party agents, party people, to go and monitor it, to make sure they sell it. So people, you know, pe they usurp the, uh, the work of our Greek. The, so the, it's not only my the, constituency. The, it happens Obama, all over. The fertilizer is to be sold. So if you, no, no, if you, it, if you, if you, if you compile the list of parties, free. listen, if you compile, no, it's not free. Mm. It's to be sold. It, it's to be sold. So, so how, was it price. how was it locked up? Well, they took it that it's a party thing. <laughs> that it, the, the, the fertilizer was sent down, or uh, the president, MPP, have sent fertilizers to the distributor among their farmers. They are MPP. So if you are not a party bearing, uh, member, they will not sell you fertilizer. So that's a good constituency. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, check uh, that. We'll get uh, our uh, people out uh, there. Right. To, to you can send uh, them to support us right now. Gary, come in. I'm not making a mischief. Is he my, is he my Gary, uh, come, come in. This is not there. new. Under the NDC, we, we, we heard and saw this happening. Is it possible that it's being repeated? Yeah, but you see, if. Well, I, I'm not in Zabzugu, I'm not in your constituency. Yes. I, I cannot sit here and say whether this is true or false. I cannot say it. But the bottom line is that if you said something wrong going in, what did you do about it? What did you do about it? What, who did you report the matter to? You well, see, it, I is, it, you see, it, it is not enough. You see, no, honorable, listen, listen, listen. Let, let, let's, let's make some progress. It's not enough to count the public, you know, you know, TV to also show your frustration or rant about something which, in your view, mm. is untoward. The question is, what did you do if it is true that this is going on and it is wrong? What have, we have we reported to the relevant uh, agencies? Uh, uh, have, you, have you reported this? Yes, yes this I did. To who? I did. To who? I sent, I tried, I contacted the uh, regional minister as a stand send them report mm. to make sure they intervene. Right. I think we'll get our people to quickly cross check that. Then I also, I also uh, made sure that I contacted the, mini the, the agri personnel. It's absolutely mm. And they were frustrated. Why were they frustrated? Because the party people went there to make sure that whatever they were doing were, you know, frustrated. They would not be uh, allow them to sell. You mean they, they could not act because they, the they could not act because taken over by party? Of course, party? of course. <laughs> but that apart, let's right. continue. Right, 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 right. All right, we, we'll find out. Let, 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 you, you can do Gary, wrap up for me on, on, on this I one. I think that I think that uh, uh, I'm, I, I'm much enthused about the fact that the minister of uh, for agri has shown much commitment, mm. much zeal, and much determination to ensure that uh, our food security in this country, uh, you know, is secured at least for the 2017 and 2018 uh, farming year. And, and I think we should encourage him and give him more grace on the elbows. And if there are any concerns as to any district or region about any web infestation, they should alert the relevant authorities to deal with these matters. And also on, on the issue of your fertilizer <laughs> matter, even this is true. Mm. I can't see and say it is true or false because I have no idea what they're talking about. If it is true, I think that they, ha they have to address the matter because see, Food security everywhere. It food security for all Ghanaians. Right. At the bottom line. So, exactly. So, so, so I do not think that there will be a conscious effort by anybody in this government to say, well, this area we think is an NDC prone area, and therefore let's stifle them of development or food or anything. Nobody can do that. So, so it's not possible. No, it's not. No, no, nobody can it's do that. Happening under the NDC. You see, That's you see, you see, that, 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 you see the allegations. Right, you see, so we have to look at the person, the person leading the party. The leader of the nation, Nanado Dan mm. he will not encourage this sort of thing going on. If indeed this is true, that is why I'm saying that if these things are true, I'm saying kindly report to relevant authorities. Obviously, it will come up, and then they will know. Say, oh look, come and that. Because yes, I can. I mean, you know, you are human beings. Human beings, people may decide that well, they can you know go around the, the system and do certain things which are which are which are not proper. But now, as you are saying, it's an allegation you are making. Said so regional minister is away. If it is true. I'm sure that you are journalists, you can follow the matter, but right. there can be no conscious effort by this government to deprive any citizen of Ghana food 
or anything of development because the person is of, NDC of, of course. or what? It's not possible. All right. It's not possible. It's not an I'm issue grateful. of the president. Mm. Well, well noted. Yes. I'm grateful. We'll, we'll follow that issue. Let's jump to the story in the finder. Uh, several other newspapers have it. Uh, uh, the Minister of Education, Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe, has outlined the modalities for the implementation of government's free senior high school policy, which starts in September 2017. According to him, government will only fully fund the education of students over the three-year duration. Uh, this means that students who are repeated for non-performance will subsequently have to pay their fees. According to him, since uh, the package covered each beneficiary for a period of three years, students were expected to bear the responsibility of studying hard and passing the exams else they risk losing their slots just as parents or just as it pertains under every scholarship program. He therefore called on parents and all stakeholders to support the students to maintain high standards and improve the quality of education. That's a story uh, thus far. The free senior high school yesterday, a lot of issues were uh, thrown out. Gary, let me begin with you. It, you, you fail to perform and you're repeated and you miss out. Um, some are arguing that it means that if a student is funded for two years and he or she fails to progress to the third year and he or she drops out and cannot pay, it means that we have wasted the investments we put in him or her. <laughs> right. I don't think so. At all. You see... The policy of free senior high school mm. is hinged, one, on quality, two, providing access to education to every Ghanaian mm. of school-going age, and then to ensure that at least we have, and, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, our people educated to understand at least the basic rudiments of life. Now, the idea of somebody repeating a class mm. and then losing your slot on the scheme that is on the scholarship scheme right. it's a very laudable idea let's all understand <laughs> let's in, all in understand. the three northern regions uh, how uh, can uh, it be if, if you are, if you fail you're dismissed yeah i thought in cancer how can it be can i make my years, so. submission oh, no, we yes. are allow him to go and I'll, I'll come back to you very soon you see you said it's a laudable idea but, please, yes please, and, please, and let me explain to you why it's laudable mm. The question of something being free does not mean that nobody is paying for it. Right. When they say it is free, it doesn't mean that nobody is paying for it. Now, it is free to the parent. For government is absorbing the burden on the parent unto itself because of the government's commitment to ensure that the citizenry is educated to a certain level at least to understand certain things of life. So when you say it is free, parent, the burden is off you. Mm. Now, to the child, to the child, there is a burden on you to go to school to learn. You don't go to school to, excuse my language, to go and play around. You go to school to go and learn. Now, if we make it that it is free, irrespective of whether you learn or you do not learn, mm. You come to the school, you come and sleep in the dormitory, you have free, free food, free lodging, free textbooks, free tuition, and yet you come, you decide that for you, you will want to stay in the house, sorry, in the, in, the, in the dormitory. And sleep. And sleep, and not learn. It will defeat the purpose of the program. Because the program is to train your brains and put you in a better position for your own life, for your own future. And therefore, there is no excuse for any student to go to the, the secondary school and go and fail and say that, yes, I have failed, but government still fund me and let me re still remain on the program. That would be a very defeatist approach to this, to this, to this Can program. every student pass his or her exams? Is it possible? It is incumbent on every student to learn. Is it possible? Students will learn, but can every it student is, it pass is, his or her exams? It, well, well. A, a, a student misses examinations due to illness, would, would they be uh, granted some kind of 
um, a leeway out to be considered. You know, you know, you know. When they say fail, 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 I think you look at the transcript to, see, to determine the level of the student participation in the school. Mm. Now, sometimes, you know, when we did A level, O level. O level five years, we paid school fees. Right. Now, if you go to A level, lower six and upper six, we're giving government bursary. Mm. We didn't pay school fees at A level. No. Lower six, upper six, there was no school fees. And we were fed free of charge. So every student was eager to pass the O level and go to A level. And at A level, our determination, our drive was to pass and go to university. Now, if, for, for instance, you fail at the A level, you don't go to university, you are left behind. Or you go and do your, your, your remedial examination. You see? If, we, if it happens that way, have we, have we been prudent in investment? We have. We invested two years of our money in you. Because you failed, you cannot get to the university. How do we get what we had hoped to get from you by paying your, 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 you your, 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 your fees at A level? You see, but every parent, and we are parents, you, you give birth to children, you take them to kindergarten, to KG1, they run through their ranks to school, you are paying their school for them. The, the, the wish of the parent will be that, look, my world will grow up to be either like me or even more than me. So that where the, I could not break, my child can break those ranks. The frontiers I could not reach, my child can reach there. That's the ambition of every parent. So you are paying the money with the expectation that your child can reach a certain level that you did not reach. Now, if for, because of the child's own doing, the child goes to school and makes some bad friends, <laughs> all right? And the child decides that he will not learn. And the child decides that he will not make bad company. And the reasons for which reason the child is in school, they will not pursue that dream. And for some reason, the child backs up. Um, but they pay, what can you do about it? We should, we should leave them behind. What can you no. do about we, it? We should leave them behind. What can you if, if my, do about if it? My ward, if my ward gets into that problem, I won't leave uh, him behind. But the, 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 the free senior high school seems to suggest that if a, if a, a, a right. child gets into that difficulty, throw him or her out of school, and that's that is not the That is not the position. But the person cannot pay, so he, that he, is he not has the to position. withdraw. What is no, the position? That is not the position. What is the position? The he position is that... Fail, Drop. No. Now no, I drop. No, I can't no, pay. No, so no, I become no, no, a deviant no, no. in society. No, 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 no. Let no, me quickly no. pick honourable no, 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 no. I'll come back. The position, the position Gary, is I, that I'll come back. it is to encourage you, the child, to make sure. Yes, that you but, are on a, but Gary, the you key, are on a scheme. The argument is that it is not everyone who can pass so, an exam. So, 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 so we so leave right. those who cannot so, pass. So wait a minute. So do we say that? So do we say that? Yes, you are in the school. Yes, you are not learning. Yes, you are not performing. Look. However, government should keep on paying for your stay in the, in the school. So if you'll be in a school, in a three-year program, you'll be there for six years My or seven years. <laughs> government let's, should still keep on paying you and keep you in the school. Is that, should, what, is that what you're saying? Which evil is better? Should government throw you out to become a deviant uh, uh, to society? Not throw you out. Uh, but if you drop out and you are able to what go to school. What government school. is going to do, if, you see, what government is going to do is that if, in, you see, there are some people. They want you to go and do that. Let me, I'm, I'm I have my time. Answer. Let me fire. They will drop you and send it. No, no, no. Allow him. He's, 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 you still have Galam say. You see, they he, can go and do If government, <laughs> if, if government, <laughs> you see, let's not, let's understand this. Thing. It's hmm. not everybody who is cut of formal education. Exactly. Right. Let's mm -hmm. get the thing clear. Mm. There are some of us who are, who are better fit to do masonry work, to do carpentry work, to do artisan work, and all that. The talent will be on earth at a certain point in time. They must, let's give everybody some basic understanding of education. Okay, so Gary, if for some your, your point is that there, there, there is a way out lesson. for those who drop out exactly. because they, they repeated no. and cannot pay their fees. No. Exactly. That is no. what you can give them. Uh, let me go to honorable. Uh, my, uh, my, uh, my, uh, my, uh, uh, my good brother. Okay. My good brother. You see, what is happening is that it's like we told the NDC at the MPP that what. Uh, John Mahama government was doing was we came out with a progressive free education and we lay out our plan that we needed to look at infrastructure then provide uh, upgrade teachers and make sure that nobody paid for 
education. But you see, they went around on that banner as if even in Accra, private people, private schools, uh, all the schools in Accra would not collect, you know, would not take fees. And now it's done on them. They didn't say that. They didn't say no, no, no. They said free education. But most people who didn't understand what they were saying thought that their children would go to school free after Nana has been sworn in. Now, this is the problem. Uh, you can't, once you say something is free, you shouldn't put strings attached. And children. We should not ensure that kids no. study in school. No, no, no. Allow the schools. You see, government should not be setting those rules. You allow the school, each school, the schools that you are paying the money to, to set up their person great. Because sometimes, even as a teacher, I'm, I was a teacher, there, well, there comes a time they have to even do marking care. Some care. Oh, no, but government people. is not going to, <laughs> no, to, government to, is to repeat students? No, no, no. Oh, you government mean government is going to no. repeat the, They're the saying students? that there's... There the GES or the no, Ministry no, of Education? No, the, no, the free... Uh, the, you, the, excuse me. Mm. What you just said mm. is that if you are given free education, the free... SHS. It's for three years. It's for three years. If you fail to if proceed you fail, to form one, no second chance. Yes, you have to pay. There's on your no own. safety net. Once you fail, you are falling through the cracks, and government will be looking at yeah. you yeah. and yeah. say, yeah. "Bye bye." The program should be complete within no, three no, no, years. No. Mm. Within three years, not yeah. four years. Okay, so yeah. I've just no. explained no. to you that no. if you fail in form one, you fail to uh, progress to form two, you have to pay your own fees. That, that, that by in so when you're repeating form one. Uh, no. So what is the help? Where is the help? Where is the help? Government had promised parents that, look, I want to take that kind of burden off you mm. so that your child will now have education and you can work free. If you are a peasant farmer, for you to disturb your honorable member of parliament to pay your child's school fees and you will not be getting it and other things and go to around uh, your family and be begging, you know, asking for money, loans, we want to do that. Mm. Let the school set those rules. And, and the minister... You don't understand. You don't understand. You see, oh, what I was, yes. I'm the, 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 the minister is saying to. simple that this is to ensure that uh, students maintain high standards in school. That is are the, you the, telling the rationale. Me, are there scholarships? If you are providing the students scholarship, fine. But these are not scholarships. But it is what? No, it is not. A scholarship... When, once you are providing scholarship, somebody has to apply for it and understand the, the, the rudiments <laughs> of that scholarship. <laughs> but here's the case you said free education. Once you pass from your JSS, you are, you are informed one is free. You don't have to p apply, you don't have to fill any form that will regulate you or tell you what to do. Scholarships have some rules. That if your marking, if if your pass mark, or you don't get A A A, we are dropping you. But mark. even w even countries, li listen, countries that have it, you know what they do? They provide you alternative sources of money. If you get scholarship and you don't meet the requirement as you go along, there is a safety net for you maybe, and that safety net will be some lower form of payment. It could be loan. But you don't come to tell us that we we'll do, you, you see, this, this is what we said, the, the, the 419 programs. It's just a 419. <laughs> we said, we told you, once you say it's free, there should not be a cutoff. And when you realize you couldn't pay the free, then you, you say, oh, you, you, do, you, you don't think that no, no. A, a student gets to school and knows that, well, whether I, 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 I learn or not, mm. I won't pay school no. uh, fees for three no, years. No, no, please. I'm just going to sleep. Please. I wake Nobody, up and go to class. You have to understand three years I'm out and have wasted the, the, no. the, the, the country's money. I, I don't think that is, uh, that is the, the, a, a good assessment. Nobody goes to school to fail. Circumstances make them fail. It could be the teaching. 
Some, sometimes they need remedial. Are you telling me that all those people who pass the uh, BHS and go to secondary school are not going there to become pe some, you know, uh, you know, somebody someday? No. Their intention is to go, you know, sky is their limit. So my, my issue is that Gary and his government has to provide safety net, but you don't allow them to fall through all the cracks and then claim that, oh, no, but not all of them, all of us are made for formal education. What do you mean by formal education? What do you mean by formal education? Formal education is for us to be able to read, write, and understand. Then we can make, you know. Right. Uh, I'm jumping. Uh, let's, let's, we're still on it, but we, uh, uh, unless you want to react to something. Yes, yeah, just a little, you know. You know, mm. you know Honorable, my, um, as I said, I'm, I'm really struggling to understand, to appreciate the line of thought. N in is terms it not raising legitimate questions of, that yes, you it, 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 don't leave the students like that? Nobody, Provide nobody, a, a, a place for them yes. to go if they drop out? Yes, that's why I said nobody is going to leave any student behind. This is a general, broad framework all right that the program is a three-year program mm. that's a baseline yeah we, we know that oh, yeah, let me let me <laughs> <laughs> okay go on the program okay, is a three-year program now the, the position of, of the of yeah. you see don't let's not also forget that the money even though it's term free the money is public money it is public pass which is being expended on students and that money cannot be go cannot be gone wasted. It's to achieve results, and the result is that once they put you in the school and the public is paying for your education, you must give the public a result of the money that they are paying on your education. And therefore, it is not negotiable to come and tell the public, which is paying your money, paying your fee for you, that look, I went to the school and I'm not performing, so keep on paying the money for me. Won't you be encouraging people to say, well, for me, as far as I'm concerned, they say free. So I can go into the school and stay there. Whether I perform, I don't perform, it is still free. I still stay in the school. What kind of thing are we telling our, our youth? That's what I'm saying. If at the end of the day, a child is given the opportunity, mm. all right, to stay in the school and you know, pursue academic pro pro program. And maybe mathematics is just uh, an F but the rest are all passes. You can see the child is performing. That cannot be a repetition. That cannot be a repetition. You understand? If a child, for instance, maybe... Right, fail. A fail in a subject. Mm. It cannot be a repetition. It cannot be a repetition. But when a child, for instance, nine subjects, and you can see consistent and concordant failure in all the nine subjects, every first term, FFFF, second term, third term, uh. You see, so, uh, and then so, you say the child uh, should so, stay in so, the school. No, so, you're, you're so not Gary, you, you're not against the idea of uh, 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 repeating students and still putting them on. What you're saying is that at least when they repeat, there should be, like he said, a safety net for them if they can't pay and will have to drop out. No, no, no. I don't, I, I don't get your question okay. right. Okay, so this is I the question. I don't question. get your question right. A, a student question goes through form one, yeah. form two. On his and, he, and, he to, passes. and he passes. On his or her way to form three. Good. He Defense. fails and is repeated to do to uh, form to another year. Now that student cannot pay the fees for the this the another form two and go on to pay for form three. So he or she drops out. What I'm asking is, you are saying that there should be a way out for him or her if he, he or she drops out of school. Yeah, right. But I think you and I will agree. Mm. That Based if on a student, a if a student, no, if the student, oh, no, oh my, man, let me let me also oh, make a point. Go on. If a student has passed year one, mm. has passed year, year two, two, you look at the trajectory of the student's own academic record. This is a good student. Year three, he fails. The student fails. And then you realize that this student possibly might have failed because sometimes maybe health reasons. I can give myself an example. Look, O level, final, final, final GC, O level, final year examination, I, I, I fell sick. And they had to carry me to the examination room to write my paper. I was vomiting at the same time writing the paper. So you are asking for safety net for them as honorable my If you can see such a student who is bright, <laughs> why not? But the policy <laughs> idea mm. is that for somebody to come to the school and then make up his mind or her mind that for me, 
Because it is free. Mm. I will come to the school and be eating and drinking and be the dormitory. I, I see. And be going to, and yeah. be going to <laughs> no, chill I, in town <laughs> and not do anything. That I is see. a problem. You know, you know, so, you know so, what so, so to every is saying. Rule, to every There's rule, an exception. There will be oh, an great. exception. Great. And we, uh, we, yeah, as, I think the concern yeah, is that yeah, you they know what I'm saying. Let's not I guess we'll follow this. Let's not be the exception. Are you saying that we should put a crystal ball to tell which student will want to, will not want to study? <laughs> okay, oh. all right. No, let me know. No, no. Okay. but no. Uh, the other issue is that the program is selling the rollout. Uh, well, that, that, that's the program rollout. Mm. Then, and then, then when it rolls out, mm. all these matters may come up for discussion. Okay. And then government along the line, who's the financier? And the money is a public money, as I keep saying. Right. Will now look, look, for persons yeah. of this cat category, they should treat it this way. I think, I think, by and okay. but then the other yeah, issue, stage, yeah, the position, yeah, the, the yes, position is that, and it's very clear. My, my, my brother, you must go to school to go and learn. Yes, the thing is, the thing is, it's just a, a campaign promise that you don't want to take time to implement and listen to other ideas. Oh, why? Listen, free means program. free. No, no, it's huh? well. From your program, program, from your from your campaign when promise. Government is committed. No, from your campaign and promise. Government is looking for available. Listen, from your campaign promise. You have to understand. By September. This by sub by it September. Is, it is kickstarting. Oh, in full force. Initially, you said free. Every Ghanaian thought that uh, you know the free would be all the secondary school, all, you know all the students. Now you say, oh, only for year one. Uh -huh. Now you are putting right. another standard. All right. Now you are changing. I don't want to say you are going to do right. something. Uh, uh, again, again. again. That is where, Let me move on. Where, this is where I have no. a big problem with no, uh, uh, the lack no, of talking Gary, sometimes. We're not going back to that you know uh, argument again. We, we, I think we have. We are moving. We are moving. But just one point. Just one point. You see, you see, government takes office in 2017. Right. And then they want government to assume a retrospective burden, all right, on students who have already been, who are already in, in, in school 2016, mm. 2015. No, 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 no. You see, yeah, it, it from government, your government has taken no. office 2017, and government says that, look, free education, any child entering school 2017, it is free, and that free is free. Oh, my brother. Gentlemen, let's quickly... My yeah, brother, yeah, no, 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 no. Listen, my, my brother, um, when we say single spine, we don't leave any... Okay. Okay. It is perspective. It when is our perspective. government says single spine, let's let's we don't leave anybody quickly, behind. Uh, free is free. We have just a few minutes to wrap up the conversation. Free should be for three years. A quick one at this. Daily Graphic, page 32, says IFS, that's Institute for Fiscal Studies, applauds government for ensuring macroeconomic stability. Uh, cautions against depressed spending. We have just about five minutes to wrap up. The oh. policy think tank says that uh, government has created a stable macroeconomic environment for the first half of the year, but says much needs to be done to sustain the stability and market confidence. It's mentioned the declining inflation rate, relative stability, the next change rate, and uh, blah, blah, blah. Those are the, the, the positives. And um, uh, however, it says that domestic revenue uh, needs to be increased if government want to sustain these uh, uh, high uh, figures. Honorable uh, uh, Uma, uh, government halfway through were told that uh, at least five over ten, that's the mark, uh, the past mark by the Institute of Fiscal Studies. Uh, the economy is kind of seeing some improvement. I guess you're seeing that too. Yes, in his pocket. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, go to Makola Market. <laughs> Let's go to Makola mm. and see, or go to Nima Market and just find, you know, the, the ordinary people buying things to see whether the economy has improved or uh, is, is going down. Inflation is coming down. No. The CD yeah. stability the, is, the CD? Is, is clear. Mm. Uh, at yes. least for some uh, four, three months, yes. it's been it's quite been stable. stable. Yes. Mm. Well, well, I want to, I want to have a uh, very stable economy too, mm. so I can uh, save money mm. and also do my other things. But if you look at the economy, uh, you know, the same, the same people, the same people downgraded our government. The same. The same IFC. And IFC. all the other bodies, they were market, they were downgrading uh, John Mahama's government and the NDC. Because things and now they are the right same right people process. coming back to say, "Oh, this government is doing well." The economy. Why? Why didn't they say about us? But if the city was running helter skelter, <laughs> would they? Would they simply have said that the economy is doing well? If inflation was not that good, uh, interest oh, rates were running up high. You, you don't expect them to applaud you when things are not right. Well, 
Uh, objectively, objectively, uh, I don't see what uh, this government is doing differently that we couldn't do. All right, I'm grateful. I'll come back to Gary later. Johnny, uh, let's pick some comments. Good morning once again. Sure. Some comments that have come in. Right, uh, mm -hmm. It says, the Honorable and Great Minister should come again. We're still with the army worm as we speak. I'm preparing to go and spray my farm for the second time. Let's not make politics with this combat in Nalerugu. And Majid Awudu from Gushegu says, yes, indeed, the canker of this army worm is worrying. But trust me, farmers are smiling because they have been able to buy fertilizer and other related chemicals to control their farms in affordable price, affordable prices due to government's quick intervention by reducing prices of fertilizer and other needed farm materials. Not mischief, but constantly being uh, mischief honorable. Please stop the comedy. So when and where are we going to hear NDC telling Ghanaians the truth without propaganda and lies? We, the citizens of Ghana, are very wise and discerning, and no amount of this kind of propaganda will divert our attention from the good vision of President Akufuado, who promised Ghanaians one district, one factory, one uh, free SHS, and has come to stay. Ghana is working again. Sami Boachi as Asamankesi and Bright says, good morning. What is the MPP man saying? Is he saying that the minister is in Accra, so uh, he only knows about the happenings in Accra? If truly he only knows about the happenings in Accra, which will be very strange, how then can he come out to say that the chemicals are supplied all over? Who briefed him on that? Shaking my head. Uh, I'm simple from cantonment. And uh, TV3, good morning, Senior Bright. Looking at the time this government came to power and the time this army worm devastation or devastation, uh, devastated the farms uh, against the level of actions taken to curb the situation, the minister is not far from saying the battle is won. Take this scenario. When you go to war and claim victory, it doesn't mean none of your soldiers didn't die. If you have a couple of army worms in certain farms, it doesn't mean the battle is lost. You feel me? Uh, Mr. Chikpo Bright, you feel him? Uh, <laughs> Hello, I'm uh, Kambosia from Navarongo. The, uh, they bought a few bottles of chemicals from, for the army worm, which never lasted for a day, and that was all. Hence, do I get to the Ministry of Agriculture to complain to the minister? We are still seriously affected by it, since, uh, hence we need drastic measures to be able to solve the problem. Alasa Wawana comes back to say that the people in the Upper West are taking advantage of food, plenty for food and jobs as uh, serious to improve the living conditions, while their overall contributions should also be gearing positively towards national development. Are those opposing the free SHS afraid that one day the upcoming younger ones will be more enlightened to the extent that being patriotic will be the only option left to them in substitution of corruption, bribery, and lies? Are they of the view that their lies will no longer uphold, hence their inability to push through any propaganda from Jamie Utiani? Right. Mm. Thank you very much. There. Right. I'm grateful. Keep them coming. Uh, we'll read them in the course of the show. Uh, Gary, wrap up for me. Uh, the IFS says the economy is uh, on good track. It has a question in government that, uh, hey, get more domestic revenue in. <coughs> yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's a welcoming news. But uh, uh, just six months down the line, I don't think that uh, uh, it is something to uh, make government sleep on this horse and then say, well, they say we're on track, so mm -hmm. let's go and sleep. I think there's more to be done. There's more to be done, and government ought to do whatever it takes to ensure that the lives of the ordinary man in this country you know, is improved by the end of the four-year term or eight-year term or even 16-year term or 20-year term when the people of Ghana decide that the mandate of this republic will be given to the Patriot Party. Party. Mm. Now, if you look at even inflation now dropping all the way from 17 to 12 percent, it's a much improvement. If you look at the forest, uh, you know, uh, to the CD dollar, you know, you will see that it's an improvement. You know, and obviously, once uh, you're a businessman and uh, you, you need Forex to trade, trade you to bring in stuffs, and then you go and then, you know, you, some stability is on the market. It helps you to plan. And you can plan well because you can know that, well, the dollar is 4 to, four to 2 or, or 4 to 4 3 or 4 1, at least over a period of six months. And, and it, can, it can help in your own planning. So I think that having a better economy is by and large to mm. help on all of us. It's not only the people in, you know, on one side, it's the people of Ghana. Every Ghanaian must enjoy, every mm. Ghanaian must benefit under the leadership of the, the president of Akufuado to, mm. to also ensure that at the end of the day, as we move along, our lives will be improved. Not the lives of people in MPP, the lives of all Ghanaians, including my honorable uh, <laughs> uh, Uba, who uh, well, constituency <laughs> also has to ensure that you, you what, whatever, they, whatever they need in their constituency, <laughs> you know, the, 
everything that they need. They should be giving. They, should, they can also feel. They can also feel yeah. and enjoy. You know the, something. The, the, the better administration, which this I, government I, is. I, I, I do. I, I do. Mm. So of course, you just praise it. But you know that I'm not an economist. But you know that for any economy to take off, or for all the uh, economic dividends to come, you have to have invested or taken actions earlier. So these things, these improvement that you are seeing, are the uh, home, uh, what uh, our home former home homegrown policies, policies <laughs> that are harvested, that are giving us the dividends. <laughs> Yet, and that's the only thing with the MP MPP. They only want to, in, you know, inherit assets by no liabilities. I'm grateful. <laughs> Honorable Hassan Rumai is a member of parliament for the Zabzugu constituency, a member of the NDC. Guy Demako is a member of the NPP's communication team and a legal practitioner. Grateful for your time, gentlemen, this morning. Thanks so much for joining. Those of you who Thank stayed you. out there to be part of the show, we're also grateful. Keep sending your comments. We'll read them in the course of the show. We're uh, stepping on the brakes for now. When we come back, we'll have sports. Hi, good morning, and it's time to bring you all the latest in the world of sports with me, Theo Inyan. Let's start the action. Now, we start off with the Black Stars Team B team. They have stepped up their preparations for a doubleheader of qualifiers against Burkina Faso as they bid to reach the 2018 Championship of Africa Nations. Now, the 28 players selected from across the Ghana Premier League are going through their paces in Pram Pram for the first of the two games on August 12th under the supervision of Black Stars assistant coach Maxwell Kunedu, who is confident the team will be ready and able at the time. Arrival of the TV3 sports team at the training camp, Black Stars assistant coach Maxwell Kunedu was in charge of the training session with his technical team. He took the players through training drills to keep them in shape ahead of the qualifier. 28 players called from various clubs in the Ghana Premier League were in camp with the inclusion of five Kumasi Asante Kotoko players, six players, including linchpin Majid Ashimeru, were called from league leaders Wafa, three from Accra Hearts of Oak, and four from Adriana Stars. Coach Maxwell Kunedu is confident his team is ready to face the Burkina base. Preparation has been good. The boys are doing their best. We are very confident, but we also need to know that we're going to play against uh, a very strong opponent. So we respect our opponent. But uh, we are confident we can always win, even away from home. But just that we also have to know that Burkina is also a very, very good side. Kumasi Asante Kotoko forward Sadiq Adams is fit and running again after the accident on July 12th. Now on national duty, he hopes he can help the team to a victory in Burkina Faso. Even though it happens, you just have to come back and train hard to psych yourself and get back to the field. This is what we do, so we just have to forget everything and continue. So I think uh, the preparation has been good. Accra Hearts of Oaks' win for Kabana has had a taste of both senior teams. He was included in Kwesiapia squad for the AFCON qualifier against Ethiopia in June and has now reported to base to take on a different national assignment. He says the experience he garnered while training with the senior national team will tell when the local side plays Burkina Faso and is confident of a Ghana win. It will be a tough game, but with the kind of training, the preparation and everything, I think we can go there and then uh, win the game. The local Black Stars have been runners-up twice at the tournament in 2009 and 2014. All right, so now Ghana will play Gambia in the opening game of the 2017 Wafu Championships in second day on September 9. The Black Stars team B will set the tone for a first round of knockout games at the Sipon Stadium. Nigeria have meanwhile been drawn against Sierra Leone. Ivory Coast uh, will face Togo, while Senegal will have a date against Liberia. The winners of the eight knockout games will then proceed to the next round, which will involve two groups of four teams each. The games will be played in Cape Coast and Second Day.
Now, Asamojan has started strongly for Turkish side Kayseri Spore after scoring a brace in their 4-2 preseason win over German outfit Hanover 96. The Ghana captain came on in the second half and converted a spot kick to draw the Turkish side level on 2-2 in the 83rd minute. Three minutes later, Jan was on target again to give his side the lead before Wellington uh, scored in injury time to seal the win. It was a bright start for the former Sunderland striker who joined his new club last week. Asamoah making good strides in Turkey. That is his first European club since he left Sunderland way back after the 2010 World Cup. Let's see exactly what he will be able to do and, of course, translate that to the Black Stars. Now, it is the most unlikely sport that you would see a Ghanaian involved in. Winter sport has never been particularly fanciful in Ghana or for Ghanaians, but one man is hoping to change that. Sprinter Bob Sleder is a uh, skeleton uh, athlete Akwesi Frimpon hopes uh, you know, his rise from a boy in Kumase to winter sports can help make that difference. Frimpon was born in Ghana but raised in the Netherlands and is a former Dutch national youth champion in the 200 meters. A 31-year-old former sprinter who discovered his talents for bobsleigh and skeleton after an ankle injury cut short his sprint career has gone on to compete at several international events. And despite the challenges that the weather provides, he is confident he can help the sport gain grounds in Ghana. Now we are targeting the six major regions uh, here in Ghana and we want to recruit different young athletes that are passionate about trying something new. So we are really looking for any kind of athlete. It just happens to be sprinters, can be former tennis players, former handball players, whoever wants to uh, give something new a try. And we're just looking for speed and physical strength. While helping others get to grips with the sport, Frimpong is also working at becoming a master at it and hopes all will come together nicely at the 2018 Winter Olympic Games. It's my goal to go to the Olympics. Uh, it's a really introduction for me to put Ghana on the map in the sport of skeleton. I'm the second athlete ever to do winter sport for Ghana, but ver the very first one of West, whole West Africa to actually do skeleton. So we want to put Ghana on the map in 2018 and show these Ghanaian kids that it's possible. We want to develop a team to have a, our own Ghana bobsled team and skeleton team at the Olympics in 2022. For the first time that we've had Ghana represented in ice sliding, quasi frimpong. I can see from Paul ready to put Ghana on the map. Anyway, so let's move away from that. Let's go straight to some football news. And in Europe, this news will please Manchester United fans uh, as Gareth Bale cannot be guaranteed to remain at Real Madrid this summer. Not so much for Liverpool fans who could lose Felipe Coutinho uh, to Barcelona. A stunning bid is on the table. We'll bring you more on the transfer news this morning, but let's stick with Philippe Coutinho. That man, um, Liverpool insists, have not received any bid uh, you know, from any club, despite increased confidence in Barcelona that a deal for the Brazilian can be struck. Liverpool have rejected Barcelona's opening bid and told the Spanish club their star midfielder is not for sale. Barcelona's sporting director, Robert Fernandes, and lawyer, Andre Kerry, who helped sign Neymar are understood to have held discussions with Coutinho's representatives in London prior to linking up with the team in Washington. Uh, some reports have suggested Liverpool could ask for as much as 150 million euros for the midfielder. Like I promised, we'll come back to the transfer news and bring you other tidbits from this morning. But Ghana cycling team is hoping to build on their impressive tour. Uh, the Le, uh, Vesta win in Abidjan last Friday. The win in the international tour event was the first for Ghana in the prestigious events. Dwabedue Champong has the details. The tour in Abidjan is one of the most prestigious on the continent and the triumph a major shot in the arm for Ghana cycling. It was the first for Ghana since its inception in 1986, and those charged with running the sport in the country say it is the latest indication that the sport can thrive in Ghana with more attention. We've brought the yellow jersey and then brought other trophies. Then tell tells you that cycling uh, is on the rise, it's not going to come down. And you always need to be physically fit. If we are not getting programs for the boys, 
they are so much dull they cannot write but if we are getting consistent even local programs like maybe the national championship maybe monthly programs that we can do as a cycling league sort of which will be sponsored by any company or the government sponsor and then we'll be able to try to get these boys working up very well ghana's triumph was masterminded by 22 year old anthony Boache. he won the ultimate yellow jersey for the best cyclist and best young cyclist and says they have to brave too many odds just to stay competitive there were certain bicycles that i was using which we go to some international tours i could see that mine is not used in, but they allow us since we don't have the expected amount it was like who is this guy what can you gain from cycling but i said to myself that i want to make a name make a mark so that i can make ghana proud and my family as who <laughs> All right, so now let's do some punch in sports. I'm talking boxing. It is billed um, as the biggest and possibly the richest fight in combat sports history. And tickets are on sale at eye-watching prices. When former five-weight boxing world champion Floyd Mayweather and UFC lightweight title holder Conor McGregor stepped into the ring at a T-Mobile arena in Las Vegas on August 26, some 20,000 people will be in the arena. The scrap for tickets during Monday's release was intense, short-lived, and disappointing for the majority but will anyone be willing to shell out one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to be there ticket resale website stop hub um, has tickets on sale at that price with several others at a comparatively cheaper one hundred thousand um, dollars ticketing prices now american mayweather who is 40 years old will come out of retirement to face mcgregor in that 29 year old irishman's first professional boxing bouts. McGregor's lacks, uh, lack of experience has uh, led to some criticism of the bouts from which both men are expected to earn as much as $100 million. Now, there's another race in the Formula One this weekend. This race not only defines uh, who could be in the lead for the championship, but also serves as an opportunity for the rivalry between two drivers to entertain their worldwide fans. With some 20-point difference, Sebastian Vettel is putting thoughts of his Ferrari future on hold as he prepares to fight back against a resurgent Lewis Hamilton at the weekend's Hungary Grand Prix. It's been a lot of change, obviously. Uh it was a tricky year, you know, I had in 14 when uh, then the option was there to start something new and I wanted to, you know, start something new and in the end I guess it's proving it to yourself that you can do it again and again and again, that's the, the challenge every year. Yeah. So, you know, when things came together I knew that it would be a lot of work, uh, probably didn't imagine it was that much work, but it's been very, very interesting and it's nice to, you know, slowly see, even though we're leading the championship now and things look peachy and everything, but it's still a long way to go. He's extremely gifted at uh, what he does. It comes naturally to him. I don't think it's, you know, a huge challenge for him to drive quickly, uh, to adapt. You know, you, you, named, you named it with different conditions and so on. So in the end, that, you know, he's always, he's always there, but he's not unbeatable. All right, so we return to football, and like I was telling you earlier, Manchester United fans will be happy because Gareth Bale has been told by Zinedine Zidane he cannot guarantee he's going to be at Real Madrid this summer. But uh, Philippe Coutinho could also be a Barcelona player next season. The transfer news right now. Snow like closing in on a £45 million deal for Monaco's 21 year old France midfielder, Thomas Lehmer. Real Madrid coach Zinedine Zidane has said he cannot guarantee that Wales winger Gareth Bale, who is a target of Manchester United, will stay at the Bernabeu this summer. Chelsea manager Antonio Conte is planning a £50 million swoop for two England midfielders, Everton's Ross Barkley and Arsenal's Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. Liverpool are ready to make a one-last-ditch attempt to sign RB Leipzig's Guinea midfielder Naby Keita with a bid in excess of £70 million, likely for the 22-year-old. Liverpool remain unmoved in their stance that Brazil forward Philippe Coutinho is not for sale amid interest from Barcelona. Inter Milan boss Luciano Spalletti says he wants Croatia winger Ivan Perisic, a target for Manchester United, to stay at the club but that he can't say for sure what will happen. 
Juventus have turned their attention to Paris Saint-Germain's France international Bless Matuidi as they look to sign a defensive midfielder, further clearing Manchester United's path for Chelsea's Serbia midfielder Nemanja Matic. AC Milan chairman Marco Fassoni has revealed the club have spoken to the agent of Chelsea's Spain striker Diego Costa. France striker Karim Benzema is expected to re-sign with Real Madrid for the upcoming season, regardless of whether the club signs Monaco's Kylian Mbappe. Argentina forward Paulo Diabala, a target for Manchester United and Barcelona, has no plans to leave Juventus this summer. Lucas Perez's agent has traveled to London to negotiate the 28-year-old Spanish striker's return to Deportivo La Corona. And that's exactly where we bring an end to the Sports Bulletin with me, Thierry Nyan, right here on New Day. Sports is over, but of course, New Day still continues. You should stay tuned to TV3. We'll bring you some more sports news later on Media Life. Welcome back. We're going to discuss the movie industry at this point because, of course, it's worrying to us that it seems as if the movie industry is waning. But I'm joined by Anthony Wood. He's an actor and a script writer and also Justice Abada. He's a director. Yes. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, to congratulations, of course. Your movie, your short movie, won an award recently, I'm yeah. told. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, it was, um, the title is Bitter Sweet Wine. Yeah. Why yeah. that title? Um... <laughs> Bittersweet wine mm. because, you know, love could get bitter okay, and sweet. sweet. And love is just like wine. Right. So then it means the movie is about love. Yeah, it's about love. Nice. Yeah. But of course, short movies, I don't know, I need to ask the question because is it the way forward for our movie industry? Do you think that it will gain more recognition as against the lengthier movies that we put out there? Yeah, I think, personally, I think short film is a way to sell mm. Ghana. Right. You know, um, movies are um, sources of tourism. So um, um, when you when you watch um, Nigerians and South Africans and Kenyans and all that, they they have crazy short films mm. which actually sell them outside. Right. You know, we have a lot of short film festivals, international short film mm. festivals, which um, actually um, 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 sell most of these African countries. So I think short film it it also gives an opportunity for upcomers to to be to be to yeah. be popular mm. to be sure. known you right. know yeah but for me your short movie has two casts two it's a two member cast um movie yeah. do you think also it you know you put in less resources when you have to produce a short movie because of course if you're using two people then you only have to pay two and then a few of the, the cameramen crew. the crew yeah. yes so yeah. moving forward does it also come with the cost burden that this is less so why don't we go in for more of those yeah it depends on the script as well okay but uh, short films are mostly low budget mm. yeah and it's just there to explore creativity and uh, the talents okay so it's like um, it's something you're just like trying to see you are just trying to do something there's just something small not something uh, for the market mm. something to explore creativity so it's not something we spend too much on okay yeah but if we're not spending too much on, then someone yeah. will be worried about the quality of what we produce. Does it come out the same way as a long movie would? Yes, um, I'll say yes, because um, most of the time, the short films, you see, um, it's a short film. Okay. So you... Okay, so let me ask, what is a short film? Okay, a short film is um, a film mm -hmm. that um, is a, it's like a feature film, okay. but which is no more than 40 minutes. Not more than 40, 40 minutes. minutes. Wow. Yeah. But so if yours if is... Yes, Ours is 19 minutes. Cool. I'm saying 19 minutes. Uh, With some seconds. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just about 20. Yes. Let's wrap it's it up. 20, 20 minutes. minutes. Okay. 20 minutes. Mm. So um, I say, um, you know, short film. Short film. Our, our, our short film, mm. for instance, um, is just is just basically two cast. You were mm -hmm. saying it's less um, um, if it's cost. Yeah. But I, I'll say yes, it's true. But um, they have quality. Okay, because. You are you are you are producing a short film for a just within days. yes few, few days yeah and then uh, for few minutes okay people are going to watch it mm. with the same equipment so right yes so yeah. there's you still so get there's quality. quality so even though it's it's less costly maybe it's yeah. labor intensive is that what it is yeah 
Okay, it because is. you need to cram all of that up in yeah. a very short in a very time, short within time. Yeah. very short, okay. Yeah. But guys, what made your movie stand out amongst the others? Because all the African countries seem to be ahead of us when it comes to short movie industry, I understand. Um, I'll say one, the story. Okay. I'll say the um, creativity aspect mm. from the director. Mm. And he's, he, he was the, no, actually, he is <laughs> um, 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 a cinematographer, so okay. it made it easier wow. because he had that creative mind. Mm. You know, um, we, we were able to um, um, get the audience to move along with us. Wow. Our um, competitors treated child marriage, child prostitution, prostitution okay. and yeah. all that. It, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a great content. Right. We just did fiction and we did uh, love and mm. um, romantic things and all and that. It but took over. but, but uh, it, it, it's because of our quality. Mm. We actually watched their and trailer pictures. and all that. Yeah. And then we realized that our pictures were good, right. um, the acting was good, mm. and um, the dieting was good, like everything was good. But when we watched this, we realized that the trailer and others, there were some left out and all that. Yeah. So we felt, okay, when we, we went away from mm. the um, child prostitution, child marriage, mm. so I think we stood out. Anyway, but it's premiering on the 1st of August. Yes. August. Where exactly? Planet Kebab in Osu, somewhere there. Okay. Yeah, Planet Kebab. So yeah. we're all screen. invited. Yeah, invited. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey. It's an it's an open right. screen, so. Yep. so that's it. Thank you so much, guys, and All congratulations right. again. Right, we'll you. take a break. We'll be back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. This is New Day Live on TV3. My name is Johnny Hughes, and I've been joined by Mr. Johnny Wahi, CEO of the Universal Merchant Bank, and Yvonne Botre. She is head of marketing and communications of the bank. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Congratulations. Good morning. UMB is 45. Congratulations. Thank you very much. How have we done it 45 years down the lane? Uh, or up the lane, I must say. <laughs> um, how have we come this far, Mr. Wa? Yeah, um, it's been 45 years of exciting banking. For many years, uh, Merchant Bank, now UMB, uh, was the premier or the only um, bank that was 100% dedicated to the needs and um, aspirations of corporate Ghana. Okay. So for, there are several enterprises that you see here today in Ghana or companies that you see today mm. Who actually owe their existence because at one point in their life this bank was there to to, to assist them. Right. We've played pivotal role mm. in the setup actually of the Ghana Stock Exchange, mm. where most of the companies there we assisted in their listing, in their all the activities that they've done there through at the subsidiary that we had at the time. Mm. So as a bank, um, we've been in the business doing one critical job mm. that banks are supposed to be doing, that is safe custody of people's money. Right. And we've done that for 45 years mm. without a hitch. I and see. I think that is an achievement that is worth celebrating. Congratulations. Let me come to you, Yvonne, now. Yeah. Uh, 45 years down the lines, there have been ups and downs, but certainly there are key achievements or major achievements. Uh, you want to add on to what Mr. Johnny was mentioned so far? Yes, I think from our early beginnings, we were truly a uh, premier merchant bank. So there's a storied mm. history with relation to our corporate banking expertise. Mm. But in terms of our major achievements, you know, and even within the banking sector, we've won Ghana Bank of the Year 2003, um, Bank of the Year in terms of product innovation 2005, mm. 2016 Brand Excellence Award for Brand Leadership, Mobile Money Month, um, best, bank, best Performing Bank, 2015, mm -hmm. you know, gender sensitivity award as mm -hmm. well. So there's a whole host of wars and a whole host of accolades mm -hmm. for UMB. Mm -hmm. And even most recently, 2017, um, mm -hmm. best bank in cybersecurity risk management mm -hmm. and best corporate bank as judged by the European mm -hmm. Bank Magazine. So I can go on and on as you see, but we've had a lot of, you know, achievements and recognition throughout our history. Right. And we know that going forward, we'll do even more. Mm. How are we bringing the customers along uh, this success journey? Because oftentimes they are the base, but how do we carry them along to be part of the story? Actually, it's not oftentimes, all the time, uh, is a customer who is at the forefront of what right. we do. So we are celebrating 45 years because we've had people who have held this bank mm. up uh, for 45 years. Mm -hmm. And those people are called our clients or okay. our customers or our business partners. Mm. Uh, whichever one that you feel com comfortable with. Absolutely. And um, the activities that we plan to celebrate the event or this anniversary, right. we have the customer at the center of all the activities. Tell me about some. Um, just tonight, there's a very big dinner ball I that see. is going to take place at the Moving Peak Hotel. I see. Where we've invited a lot of our customers, mm. policy makers, the general public, mm. um, 
uh, civil society, other bankers, and people in the media to mm. come and help us celebrate this big feat right. that Universal Merchant Bank right. UMB has mm. achieved over 45 mm. years. So all the activities that we've planned, there's going to be a health work, mm. there's going to be a Thanksgiving service, mm. yeah, we're going to have a customer uh, deposit promotion mm. all along till the end mm. of 2017. Mm. The customer is going to be part of every single activity mm. that we undertake. Let's talk about your service. strategic plan moving forward because it's hyper-competitive banking environment right now. Everybody's trying to cash in yeah. on what's there. Yeah. What is it that will set you apart in the next five years? It's the things that we've done which, you know, have put us aside or set us aside from the general population in mm. terms of the banking, pop uh, the, the, the banks in the, in the environment. Okay. Um, we sell vanilla products. Mm. From one bank to the other, the products are very similar. Okay. And the one thing that set one bank apart from the other mm. is the service or how that product is delivered mm. and at UNB because we place the customer at the center of everything that we do right. it means we understand exactly what we are doing because mm. we understand the customer mm. and we prefer products and services that will meet the customer's expectation okay so if we deliver the service in the best possible way mm. then we are setting us gradually apart from what how the general Okay. Uh, uh, banking pop, uh, okay. uh, uh, environment mm. uh, deal with such situations. We don't just throw pro products at our customers. Right. The products that we have thrown out are products that are a result okay. of customer feedback, okay. of things that we do. Mm. And sometimes through customer complaints, we pick feeds that mm. help us to change our processes, mm. our systems, and even sometimes change our people okay. so we can proper, properly serve mm. the needs of the customer. I even, Yvonne, speaking mm. of that, if I walk into any UMB bank, what am I to get? I walk into any of your branches, what would the reception be like? The reception will be warm and welcoming and truly exceptional. Once, you, As soon as you walk into our branch, you'll be greeted by one of our lovely, lovely greeters and customer consultants. Mm. From there, we will ascertain what it is that you would like to do today. Okay. Would you like to deposit money, receive mm. money? Mm. Would you like to send money, open an account, okay. hopefully apply for an instant visa card? Mm. Whatever it is that you wish, we'll be able to provide you with whatever service that you need. Mm. I think for us, the hallmark of the UMB banking experience is truly exceptional customer service. Service. Okay. But again, to provide exceptional customer service, it has to be tailored to our customers' needs. So that's mm. why we listen to understand what it is that our customers need okay. so that we can address those needs efficiently mm. and expediently. Mm. And the bank is across the country? Is nationwide? Yes, we are throughout across. Ghana, but we are focused in key major regions and mm. we're actually expanding to those regions where we're underrepresented. Absolutely. The, the banking trend is changing, as I said earlier. Um, how, for example, are you prepared for the future. Things are changing. Banking is not just about picking money and going to the banking no, hall anymore. It's changed. No, no. Are you prepared for it? Uh, what we, are you doing? We, we are already doing it. And um, if you see us opening one branch, in, say in two weeks time we'll be opening our Casua UMB Center wow. for Business. Mm -hmm. If you see us opening one branch, mm. it, it is one thirtieth of the investments we are making ah. in the bank. Because a lot of the investment is actually not in physical infrastructure mm -hmm. or things that the eye can see. Okay. They are in the air, mm. they are in technology, they are in the digital mm. realm of banking. Mm. Because that is the next frontier. That is where banking is moving to. Okay. People want to wake up and on their bed, they mm. can begin checking their balance, making transfers, right. paying school right. fees, paying right. their bills. Mm. The era where banks were moving to customer mm. or customers were mm. coming to the bank is far gone. It's behind us. Mm. Now we are in the era where customers want to be their own bankers. Okay. They want to determine how to do the transfer, which account to transfer to, okay. which bank to transfer to. Mm. And actually it's on their fingertips. It's right. on their tablet, it's mm. on their computers, mm. it's on their cell phones, mm. and it's everywhere. It's on the ATMs and other several distributions. And, and you will be does that. We are 100% playing in every of, uh, point of the way. All the right. things that I've talked about, mm. we have invested and are actively engaged mm. You know, uh, engaging our mm. customer on those platforms. Let me come to Yvonne uh, mm. finally for you. Uh, key mm. anniversary message one to your customers and to Ghanaians. Okay, one to our customers. Again, it's just 
to express our sincere gratitude. Because of their loyalty and support mm -hmm. to UMB, we were able to celebrate 45 years. With, major, with every major milestone, there are many people who contribute to that success. Right. And for us, it's our dear customers. Mm -hmm. Because they have succeeded, we also succeed as okay. well. To the Ghanaian public at large, those who have yet to experience UMB, right. I encourage you, please, come into one of our branches, reach out to us, and mm -hmm. you'll truly see why we're celebrating 45 years. It's been 45 years of banking mm -hmm. excellence, and mm -hmm. we know and we're certain that mm -hmm. we'll continue that path going mm -hmm. forward. UMB says you first. So uh, the event is tonight, you say, <laughs> yes. uh, at the Movin Pig Ambassador Hotel. That is correct. But, but is this something for, for the, the larger mass? You talked me about the, a walk. Yes, um, we have a series of activities lined up uh, till the end of the year. Uh, for the fifth anniversary, is for the entire of 2017. Wow. Mm -hmm. So every month, there are activities that mm -hmm. we've planned for um, um, the various months. I mean, we have five months to go um, to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And we're going to involve everyone. It's not just mm -hmm. our customers. Mm -hmm. It's the general public. We want those who have ha not had the opportunity to okay. have a taste of mm. the things, the good things at UMB okay. to, you know, just move. Right. You know, make the, that, right. that, that uh, work of faith. Mm. Go to the website, www.myumbbank.com. Mm. Okay. Or pick up a phone and call a hotline right. or walk to the nearest branch. Mm. What, what's and the hotline, quickly? Uh, I think Yvonne can... 0302 okay. 633988. 0302-633-9888. Okay, mm -hmm. UMB, you first. Thank you. And thank you for supporting the... Uh, uh, the one, one district, one factory project. Mm -hmm. Congratulations mm -hmm. to you. Thank you and very enjoy. much. Thank so you. we'll Thank take you some. Absolutely, we'll take some of your messages here on on New Day. And when, when we're done, uh, let's take a short break first of all before we come to you. This ladder thing. Well, I don't know. We're climbing the ladder. Uh, but, but this this is the picture mm. of the of the week. Uh, the special prosecutor bill. Mm. Uh, it looks like the lion. Uh, is behind the, the cage, it's been caged mm. and uh, withdrawn till further notice. That looks like uh, Muntaka Mubarak Onobo yeah. mm. and Majority Leader uh, Haruna Idrisu says, forever hold your peace. Mm. And uh, that's Tilapia's animation of uh, uh, the revival of the uh, mm. prosecutors. But I, the, the lion will come back. Mm. Yeah. The lion will so come so back. Big day. It will come back. Yes, yes, it will come back. I'll be on your radio. So those later. of you who think that uh, the lion won't come back, so <laughs> it will come back and raw. I'll, I'll be on your radio later today, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. on 3 FM 92.7 with Community Connect. We'll be talking about that urban Okada rider who defies all the odds, perhaps, mm. perhaps mm. breaks all the laws to make ends meet in Accra. Mm. He knows he's breaking the law, but he says he needs to survive. Yeah, we'll tell you that story. Okay, yeah, let me also say good uh, morning and then happy. Happy birthday to Samuel Pierre Fawson, yeah. an account officer at Olam Ghana Limited. This is from Benjamin Edo Armani Kumasi. Oh. Sammy, have a rollicking birthday today. Maybe we should have uh, been there, but hey, we are doing But who knows? You may make it before the end of the no, day. No, this so weekend, you I'm not. No, oh, so yeah. you are praying, you are fasting and yeah. praying for Ghana. <laughs> so if you see Bright anywhere, just send us a comment where you saw him, what he was doing. If it's not prayers, I won't go anywhere. anywhere. So anywhere. <laughs> you won't see me anywhere. I'll be in your bedroom, right. behind closed doors. Are anyway, sure? guys. 48 hours are you of sure? prayers. Look, yeah. this is a message from <laughs> I'm uh, sure. Brenda Dugan and, I'm and sure. the whole are you team. Sure? The the whole team. You, are you look, sure? if you find me anywhere, mm, report to the nearest police. We <laughs> 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 should report to you <laughs> to the nearest police. Anyway, guys, it's a wrap here. We'll see you same time next week. Do make it some time with us, right from Monday to Friday. The trio will be here to make your day a good one. Stay blessed. All right. <laughs> Get your ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Only for a